Yeah. We can cut that up. There we go. Vaughn T. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get them. Welcome to Urban Kings and Queens. Episode two. Legend and Goat. You gonna let the breeze? Hey, you gonna let it breathe? You gonna let it breathe, crazy? Goat. What the world been missing I think it's about time for the world to uh, listen Let's kill You don't like me, you don't like yourself They say the flow so hot, I turn the mic on hell Break out, hey now, yeah my life gonna swell I'm here to get the world records like Michael Phelps Now shall I stop and sniff a rose or do I stop and sip the rose uh, I'm thinking Viva La Vida like Coldplay There's no way that they can see us, no ray And keep a bad bitch around me like Do Ray For so long I figured I was in the What the kids league. say now, go to <laughs> Go it. Go it. it. He <laughs> about I was rapping. I heard it. I heard it a long time. I was, I was a bit oh, this was my favorite shit on that. But it was one of my favorites on that bitch. Yeah. See, I like that reaction. Used to be though, banging that shit. Yeah, I was just trying to hear it. I, ain't <laughs> <laughs> I like this new. I heard, you're right. Exactly. <laughs> Somebody better tell him like Soldier B. Oh, why? Call me Mr. Dosa Keys. <laughs> hey, hey. Yeah, this, yeah, yeah. This I wish I could rap like spit, this, dude, bro. Get the what fuck out of here. Right? I, I can't on, rap. Nah. I just lose I mean, I'm, no, I mean, I just can't rap like that no more, bro. My I, mind don't even I, process I, words and thoughts like that. I understand I what you're saying. Man. I understand what you're saying. Like, you, you, a I lot can't, of artists say that. Though. I can't rap about the shit that I was yeah. rapping about no more. You cannot. You was just in Paris. Yeah, like, it's, yeah, yeah, right. it's, yeah. Like, yeah, you gotta. You get indicted out here. <laughs> yeah, <I> can't, <laughs> you can't go back to that. that That's a, a fact. fact. Yeah. Uh, welcome to Urban Kings and Queens. This is Mad Miles, also known as Fresh Ass Deuce. <laughs> and we are here at Burn Rubber, but to the left of me. Go yeah. ahead and introduce yourself, sir. Uh, my name is Roland Coit, uh, Sir Roland Spiritual, uh, since I've been back from Paris. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> And then uh, roast fit, you know what I mean? I gotta get my shit together. <laughs> <laughs> gotta come with some. Uh, <laughs> we gotta come with bottles. Gotta come shit. with some shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I yeah. Man. I'm a pr- I'm a pr- Yeah, this is actually a rich nigga episode. Like we should have, we should have came in this bitch with some. Uh, <laughs> That's a fact. Yeah, Bro, we should have came, came in this bitch. Bottles and shit, man. <laughs> Look, part two, we I, redoing the whole. This is the first. This is the first nigga to throw money in, in any of my videos. <laughs> I we didn't have any. We didn't have any. That nigga came with. Uh, like it was like four dollars though. How much was it? Fuck that. It was twenties. It was in that bitch. Damn. Man, man, that's a fact. Oh man, fact. No, I, ain't, I, ain't, I don't remember that. <laughs> you gotta show me evidence. No, that shit. Hey, so it's listen, somewhere. Man, uh, Urban Kings and Queens. Um, I want to ask you: When you hear Urban King or Urban Queen, what do you think that? What's the meaning behind that? Uh, urban Kings and Urban Queens, um, the first thing I kind of think about is, you know, people from, uh, you know, I guess from where we from or, or the people that, that look like us mm-hmm. uh, should take on a, uh, a badge or a, a thought process of, of, of where we came from, which is, you know, kings and being kings and queens, you know what I'm saying? like. Mm-hmm. Some of us have, some of us have that thought process, uh, and m- maybe more than in recent history. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it's about implementing and activating and, and, and kind of running with it. But I think it's, I think that's dope. You know, that's that's the way it should be. Yeah. Um, last episode I had Jumpman Bostic, and we kind of just jumped straight into it. I wanna, oh, gee. I wanna show you. I mean, tell y'all where I got it from. I was in a wedding party. And we was downtown. Shout out to Glenn Woodward, H2E, what up? And I was outside. Before we went to Annex, you know, the little store on Woodward, mm-hmm. I walked in there and I grabbed me some hot Cheetos and hey. my little vice. And yeah. somebody was like, that's real. You ghetto because you outside eating hot Cheetos. I said, how's this ghetto? You know what I'm saying? This is just me. And I'm like, you think about it, I'm like, this urban. It's not ghetto. You know right, what I'm saying? Right, People right. want to throw the word ghetto out so much. And I, I take pride in where I'm from. I take pride in how we grew up. And I feel like a lot of 
people outside our culture come in and make money off of the things that we do on the regular. Mm -hmm. So I feel like we are kings and we are queens in our own vision and today vision as well. So, yeah, I mean, in all reality, that's that's what it is. Like we create culture and then it, and it gets, uh, you know, swipe from us. You know what I'm saying? Shit, even the swiping culture. Nah. It's <laughs> <laughs> a fact. The swiping. <laughs> So <laughs> move that shit into some different shit. You know what I'm saying? But yes, well, yeah, that's what it is, bro. We 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 we're, we're king, last we're long. What the swiping culture? Yeah, it lasts. I mean, it's still going. It's just so hard for anybody to. But the yeah. thing is, I not the. But I remember that shit popping early '90s too. I was young. Yeah. But just thinking about certain shit that my people, I was like, yeah. It's, it's getting off. Yeah, oh, they, yeah they, even they, when I was in high school, yeah, niggas were swiping. They, they, they some creative off. people, man. <laughs> yeah, creative. So now, now they only want to buy stuff for themselves. You know, they don't really want to. <laughs> man, people really so sick. I need some. Nah. No more, no more flights. Hey, nah, to no. Jamaica. All my, hey, <laughs> we need Republic. equipment, and we got whatever y'all need to. Let's <laughs> I make don't. Some shit. Man, I don't got nothing. I don't want nothing. You don't. You can. I don't want anything. We are still at the bottom over here. Forecast, and we need all equipment, people. All jokes. But um, from Pontiac? Yak Town, all day, West Side. Uh, that's where I teach at. I, I deal with a lot of them kids. Word. Uh, what school? Uh, ATAP. Uh, yeah. You actually donated some shoes to our school Kicks before. Kids. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Yeah. yeah. My wife is a teacher, and, and her best friend was pretty much like my sister. Janine Harper. Uh, no, Shakita. 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 Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah they're, they're, uh, they're both teachers and, you know, mm -hmm. been teaching since, you know, far back as I can remember. And, uh, you know, Kicks for Kids is, is – you know, it's pretty much it's it's something that I, w I wear like a badge. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like it's bet my, between my wife's best friend and they all own it, quote unquote, and and manage it. And I'm I do whatever I can do, do to you, do. you know bring an extra dollar in or extra pair of shoes in. You know what I'm saying? But it's dope. No, it's fire. And like I think a lot of, we would just jump so hit <laughs> forward, but a lot of the kids appreciate it. You got kids that's crying because. They don't get them shoes. You know what I'm saying? You got right. the flashy kids students in there. Then you got the middle, you know, I'm cool. I can get a pair probably every once, every in, a while. once in a while. Then yeah. you got some that just don't get the chance or the opportunity to get nothing. And he give away heat. Facts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. It ain't, it he ain't give away no heat, man. Like, yeah, it's yeah. real. It's real deal. It's KDs and. Yeah, yeah. you you're giving away heat. Yeah, Kyrie's and all Because do you still. Do the giveaway up here every year? Every year you used to clean your. Yeah, it depends. It depends. Like we try to, cause I, I, what I didn't want to do is make it seem like, you know, this is a this is a me thing. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So I, I I don't want Mr. Allen's to feel like they can't or they they'll feel some type of way if they donate or Puffer Reds or or these other stores, even a Foot Locker or a, or a Foot Action or something. You know right. Or like the Nike store. I don't want anybody to feel like I'm trying to do all this and and I, and it's about row at burn rubber right. and, and because that's a row at burn rubber thing. It's a burn rubber thing, and I, I can't be attached to it. So, no, we've done. We, I've I've hosted some of them. We did. We do them at. Uh, it's a kicks for scholars that we do around like going back to school time, mm -hmm. and uh, for the most part, every year we do that at, at Puffer Red up in Ipsy. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And then, uh, you know, we've linked with a lot of people, man. It, and it's it's that's the whole thing because it ain't about it ain't about me trying to say yeah I got. I, I got 50 pairs of shoes for these kids. It's mm -hmm. like when we, I could be saying, yo, we got 500 pairs right. for these kids. You know what I'm saying? And that, that's the thing. I feel like we kind of, I don't know, I battle with it too because a lot of us do do stuff kind of of our hearts. You, you know doo -doo. what I'm saying? Huh? You said doo-doo. You definitely did. Yep, you, said doo -doo. you said doo doo. Yeah. You said yeah. a lot of us doo doo. Doo doo stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Take a shit, yeah. my bad. Yeah, this <laughs> <is> <laughs> no, a lot Not of good. us, you know, we do a lot. Mm -hmm. We give back a lot, and I know a lot of people always say, "Are you doing this for clout chasing and all of this?" And it's just like, yeah, that's a tough, that's a tough line, man. Be and I feel like it's like we try and show it so people can see, you know, and probably want to like, oh, do. I want to do this too. Not yeah. really clout chase. Like I'm not trying to be all the one like when we did the book bag drive yeah, that came off of instagram post we right. saw somebody else we, doing it we didn't it. say like, we came up with it or do nothing. it here we just did it Dope. and a lot of people said that it was clout chasing and all this trying to get other artists to donate bags and to help out and stuff it's just reaching out yeah i mean because what it boils down to what i what i try to you know and it's even it's tough for me too because i you know 
quote unquote part of my job is to sh- show people what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, when it, you got the way I think about it is like it's this is coming from the bottom mm-hmm. of my heart. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If you take it as I'm showing, trying to show off, or I'm trying to do this, or I'm trying to do that to get to get this, it's like, mm-hmm. man, that's something you got to deal with with yourself. Because if we don't, then. Y'all ain't getting back to the hood. You feel me? And then, <laughs> like, uh, you know, it's like a two, it's like a double edged sword. Mm-hmm. It was crazy. One time I saw this, I, I was, I, I never give money to people like on the side of the street. Like, mm-hmm. you know, when you pull up off of eight yeah. mile and it's around yeah. that little bridge or whatever. And I was like, man, I was feeling, I was feeling good one day. So I was about to get this guy like, you know, $4 or something, like whatever singles I had in my pocket. And I looked up and this dude had on a burn rubber hat, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, damn, I want to take a picture of him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But then I'm like, I can't post it because yeah. niggas going to be like, why are you posting this dude? You know right, what that you giving, yeah, yeah. And then yeah. they got, and then I was just like battling with this thing and end up not even giving them the money, dog. You know what I'm saying? And just pulled off like. That's, that's weird. Bro. You know what I'm saying? And like, then it was like at that moment, I was like, man, fuck what people think, bro. You could, I was like, you should be happy to see this person with your, you know, with your yeah. product on, like, you should be proud of that. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Man, fuck y'all people, man. I'm so <laughs> sick of y'all, bro. I hate going like, people, serious. Man. But growing up in Pontiac, mm-hmm. how was it? I, I know a lot of my kids got a lot of different lifestyles. How was it for you? Uh, you know, it's it's different now. I'm 40. Mm-hmm. I'm 40 as hell. 40. You feel me? <laughs> uh, so when I was growing up, it was, it was it was like one thing I can say that I that I like my observation of, of like kind of looking back on my life and, and kind of s- seeing how like, you know, you know how you like, you, you come up with people, right? And mm-hmm. then you start going this way and they start and going they that way. way. Yeah. And then, but y'all was doing the same thing. They just, you know, they just chose to sell dope. I chose to sell sneakers, mm-hmm. right? And uh, I, I, I always like get caught up in, uh, I always get caught up in, uh, yeah, we, yeah, no, 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 we're not open, yeah. My bad, John. Oh, we cool. Uh, I don't even look like I, this is open. I, 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 <laughs> and the sign on the door says <laughs> five o'clock. Uh, but I, I look back, man. I I look at myself, right, and I and I, I say like, why, like, what about me wants more? Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? Because so many people got stuck into like just being in Pontiac yeah. and, and living this life of pleasing these people in Pontiac. And I and and I describe Pontiac to people as uh, it's gonna sound kind of crazy. But, okay, you think about, like, this this fat ass, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you think about a fat ass and how beautiful a fat ass is, right? <laughs> and that's, I ain't never seen them behave in this <laughs> manner. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, like, that's Oakland County, right? Yeah. And then that fat ass has, like, an asshole. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That shit comes out of, mm-hmm. you know? And that's Pontiac. Okay. For real, for real. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. it's it's set up like that. It's set up, but being in that shithole, you look out and you see like million dollar homes across mm-hmm. the street, or like three streets over. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Depending on where you live at, you look at and you see, and you go, you know, a mile out and you see, you know, castles. Like like you go to Rochester and all that down there. What were? Yeah, it's crazy. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people didn't get to experience that. You know what I'm saying? Like I know people that never been to Cedar Point, bro. I know, I know, I know people that had up, up until like we was in college and shit had never even been to Detroit. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of those people get stuck or got stuck into in that into that whole like, yeah, man, I don't lead, I don't lead the North yeah. Side. I, I don't lead the South. Cut you off because when you said something, uh, I coached uh, basketball too, mm-hmm. and one of the girls said, "Dang, it's a long drive," and we literally went from Pontiac to De- downtown yeah, Detroit. You that's know what crazy, I'm bro. But that's you know, you know. Other than that, though, man, I stay. I, you know, I ain't gonna sit here and, can't, and sound make it sound like I came from you know the the gutter. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I came from a, a nice, the, probably the 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 you know. I don't. Um, how do I say it? Like the most uh, predominantly uh, good money side of town. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. a lot of people over there it was like middle uh, class, middle class, upper a little mm-hmm. bit. You know what I'm saying? Like. Uh, Indian Village, you know, you got Indian yeah. Village in Detroit. It's the same mm-hmm. historical homes. You know, my my grandparents and all that all had great jobs and all that shit. You know, mm-hmm. but I still had, to, I still came up. You know, my my pop so dope. He stayed right on the other side of the street, which was basically uh, uh, across here on, which is 
you know, trappish, you know what I'm saying, and got a lot of things going on. So I saw both sides. Like, one thing about my pops was crazy. He was, my pops was was spoiled and he sold dope. Mm -hmm. So he was really getting it. That's you know what I'm saying? Uh, like, he could ask it for his parents for anything and they would, you know, buy him whatever, but he also sold dope. So yeah. it was just this crazy thing that I, I just always saw growing up. I always My pops always had beamers and, you know, all kind of crazy shit. You know what I'm saying? But I can go over to my cousin's house and be like, damn, we eating bologna sandwiches. And, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And be over there for some time, you know? And it's weird because people will look right there and be like, oh, no, you ain't shit. When I went to my cousins, that nigga, I was fucked up. Yeah. Like, yeah. And, you know, but, you know, it's, it's just like, it's, it's the same. It's the same everywhere. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like, <clears throat> you know, you could, you, it's parts of Detroit that's, that's, amazing yeah. and beautiful mm -hmm. and you know great school district and but those kids still have to drive through or ride the bus through certain parts of town and, and deal with certain things and they're going to see certain things certain things they're going to pick up on you know people a lot of, everybody out here hustling so some people are going to get attractive to the 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 actual hustle right and some mm -hmm. people are going to get the lifestyle they get addicted to the lifestyle mm -hmm. or they're going that's what they're going to kind of go to go towards so you know it's like I got addicted to the to the hustle of what hustling is, mm -hmm. but I was like, I I just don't want to go to jail. You know what I'm saying? Like I, <laughs> I used to go see my pops in jail. Like man, this shit weak as fuck. Little criminal activity. <laughs> Little you criminal know? activity. Cousins and That's all that a fact, shit. Though. I feel like, and a, a lot of the young ones that I teach now too, they don't realize that as well. Like they think that jail and shit is cool, mm -hmm. and it's just like. Bro, once you get it, like the shit is terrible. Nah, Who, I never thought jail was cool. Hell, no. I ain't gonna say cool, but they be feeling like they can handle the shit. Yeah, I'm just like, like y'all be that. tripping when I take your phone for an hour. Y'all ain't Man. gonna have your fucking phone. I, for I a guess long. it was because the niggas who was going to jail around me would get out and be like, "Yo, hell, <laughs> don't no, that, you know, don't shit. go there." Yeah, <laughs> that no, but don't you go got there. some that be like. It was nothing. They I'll do the bid. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So they get caught up yeah. with that dumb I shit. Smack, I, like smack I, rap, I, battle rappers, nigga. Man. I, I had them type of people around me, man. It's like. Too tough, bro. Yo, like, Damn. Seriously, man. Um, Yo, them niggas be cool as hell to each other. Nah. Nah, Facts, right? yeah, it's so different, bro. It'd be a, be lot, of, yeah, a lot of hugging. A lot of hugging. Oh, yeah. You know, everybody friends. I mean, hey, the bar is still there. That's all this. For sure. That's uh, all I care about. Did you go to Pontiac High? Or no. No, no. I was supposed to go to I was supposed to go to Central. So Pontiac High just is like a new thing. Oh really? Okay. So it was two it was two high schools in Pontiac, Pontiac Central and Pontiac Northern. Mm -hmm. I was supposed to go to uh Pontiac Central and I got in some trouble going to the like I was getting in a lot of trouble in junior high school, right? Mm -hmm. So my mom secretly uh <laughs> like enrolled me in a private school, Oakland Christian. And uh, and basically, she was like, in her mind, she didn't tell me this, but she, in her mind was like, my my uh, the summer going from the eighth grade to the ninth grade, she had basically told herself like, he got one more time to fuck up, mm -hmm. and I fucked up, and she said she shit my ass out there, which Middle at the time was the worst. Like I was the I was like I wanted to, I wanted to kill everybody, but in all reality, it was the best thing that could ever happen to me because it opened my eyes to a lot of things that I I didn't know. You know, it's like you yeah. think you think you know. We probably all went to the same kind of you know junior high school and mm -hmm. shit. Like just seeing white people in the, in a different in that kind of element all day every day is weird as hell. Coming mm -hmm. from you know just seeing niggas fighting and shit all day and niggas just doing like niggas shit. In class. You know yeah, because we would just go to white schools and just beat like, niggas up. Bro, for middle, no middle school, yeah. Middle school like go to Harper Woods hell, and shit. Bro. Yeah. I, I think a lot of people sleep on. I think middle school probably worse than elementary and high school. As far as what? Behavior. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Trying to find yourself. Kids like, are, are yeah. horrible creatures, <laughs> for, for me, For me, middle school wasn't. I hated middle school, bro. Yeah, like, yeah, never mind. We got jumped in middle school by some high school niggas. Middle school was pretty bad. Yeah. And some people had <laughs> you. Pretty, some people might have had fun. But, but that's no, also. No, you had fun. Yeah, you it, was, had, it was pretty bad. That's <laughs> also a crazy <laughs> time in your life, period. Yes. Just like being, you know, if you're a, fe if you're a female, you start going through, yeah. uh, you know, you start getting your cycle and things yeah. like that around that time. Start Boys going, going through shit. puberty and shit. It's yeah. a lot of things going on. And, uh, and, and then kids are just, like, Bad people, man. They are like, I mean, watch this shit. On, you know, I mean, thinking about my, my wife is a teacher. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And she be coming back telling me stories about even other from other schools, like her friends tell her. And I'm like, damn, man. It, like, why would you say that to a person? And the crazy yeah. thing, I be having to sit back, like, damn, dog, did I do this shit when I was like, you know what I'm saying? I really be having to think, like, did I hold like, 
I don't feel like I was that aggressive towards my teachers. They more aggressive now. I was aggressive towards other students. Other students, right. I get it. But yeah. the, the teachers, like to the teachers I mean, and the staff, yeah. I don't like, know. Man, my I, grandma would have fucked me up. I mean, exactly. <laughs> like I was. They but they don't be known. Shit. They don't know. Like a lot of parents don't know that their kids doing that. Just like just like little daughter, like, I'll call my daddy up here. We'll call him. Yeah. He never called them. Your dad don't know that you up here acting like this. Yeah, he'll come fuck thing. you up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. he'll come fuck you, think you he, up. You trying and to tell us they gonna don't... fuck me up? Yeah, no, yeah. Bro. No, he gonna come fuck no, you bro. up. Bro. Listen, and it ain't no easy win, my nigga. <laughs> <laughs> you feel me? I call my people too. Dog, that's oh man, that's that's a fact. Cause I started look, I started doing some substitute teaching and shit. I'm, I went to this month. I went to some shit in Fitzgerald School District. I'm like, y'all little niggas is nuts. Like Dawn said, he called his dad. I'm like, yo. I snap like call him. I'm gonna call niggas too, yeah. and I'm not gonna come outside. <laughs> I'm gonna sit in the office. I'm calling like, niggas. Hey, I'm not straight. everything smooth. Let me know when to come out. Like I'm, I'm sure. good. Yeah. Yo, but yeah, these kids wild what? as it's fuck. Unfortunate. I hope my boss ain't watching. But that's how you get the respect from the kids, though, bro. Once you cut up on the students one good time, like they look, straight. I'm not that nigga, yeah, bro. They yeah, good. Straight. Yeah, they good. Yeah, my wife said the same thing. Yeah, Miles be at the school body slamming kids, all type of wild <laughs> shit. Man. Yes, but it is what we, it is. We are literally daycare <laughs> through 12th grade. It's what it is. Say what? Daycare through 12th grade. Damn. So I have to be damn near four different people because I have kindergarten and preschool, jump straight to seven and eighth, and then might have 11 and 12. I got to be. That's deep. You feel me? Yeah. So wow. I got hey, this big-ass ninth grader. I'm in there thinking shit sweet. Yeah. I'm like, come on, we can go in the fold, locker room, bro. Right, fold you this feel nigga me? up real quick. Yeah. Should be like prison, bro. That's what it they say. Should be like that. I'd be like prison. It's like pre prison. <laughs> pre prison. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, One of the students said that. And I'm just like, fact. bro, you don't understand how made y'all got it compared to what the fuck we yeah, had. Yeah, to prison, bro. but like, yeah, them niggas be in there trying to run school, that. Bro. They're trying sure. to run that <laughs> shit, man. Hey, I'm like, I ain't never going back to fish drill, nigga. Kicking it in Fraser with the iPads and shit. <laughs> Shout out to that school, Everything man. <laughs> so, uh, you go to the Catholic, correct? Uh, we no, Christian. Oakland Christian. Christian. Okay. Yeah. How was that? It was, it was an Oakland Catholic, too. Okay. It was dope, man. Like, I hated it when I got there. But, the, you know, the, uh, the, the people that I met there, I, I'm still friends with to this day. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it, 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 ca- it caused me to have to, like, it gave, it gave me like structure, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like outside of like just my, my mom and my my step pops or whatever. Um, and it was like, it just showed me that, that uh, like a, a sense of pr- like pr- pride, I believe is the word, mm-hmm. but it showed me like, you know, like I was, I was smoking weed and drinking in junior high and like junior high school. So like when I got to high school, when I got to that school, the niggas there was like, dog, like we hoopers, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like you drink, like, you, you know what I'm saying? Like what are you doing? So I stopped. I stopped drinking and stopped smoking and shit through high school, mm-hmm. for the most part. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But uh, that was just that just that alone. Like if I wouldn't, I wouldn't have stopped if I would have stayed where I was at because mm-hmm. I was that, those were the people that I was rolling with. Do you, you know? feel like? Because I you said earlier, you said that people get caught up with the lifestyle over. You fell in love with the hustle. Do you feel like you start setting your own goals around that time? Because right now I'm struggling with the kids. They don't even have goals. Yeah, I think I think I started setting goals in like going like in the ninth grade when I got okay. to Oakland Christian, because it was like, you know, I used to hoop and I used to hoop and I, I you know, I was the shit in, where I, in, like in my neighborhood mm-hmm. and, and the niggas I used to hoop with. But then I got to Oakland Christian. And I was like, they put me on like the, the freshman team. And I was like, these whole ass niggas. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, I'm way better than that, right? Yeah. But then I start I start hooping with the guys that was there. They and these all these niggas in shape. You know what shit. I'm saying? They in shape. <laughs> they running plays, doing they can shoot, doing what white boys. Do. Trap shit. You know what I'm saying? Out there. You know? You know? So I was like, all right. Dunking fundamental shit. So my thing was is was get was like to get in shape. That was a goal of mine. Mm-hmm. To, and to get you know to to get on JV then get on varsity and be the best at but those are the times that I start setting goals you right. know so let's let's fast forward um your first love first hustle oh not first. yeah not that love. he's about to get <laughs> he's, he's about to get he real made, he's man. about to get this love oh, man <laughs> uh, <laughs> we ain't gonna get emotional on this show first my first love 
hustle wise? Um, probably, probably, probably shoes. Okay. For real, for real. Because like other than like before sh- it was shoes, it was sports, mm-hmm. which ain't really a hustle. Yeah. Shit and uh, <laughs> yeah, we shooting them jumpers for the dollar shots. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was shoes. It was shoes. Like I, it was a, the, you know, I always like some of my oldest memories, like going back, I could uh, it, it, like revolved around shoes. You know what I'm saying? Just, you know, cutting my auntie's grass because mm-hmm. I wanted some Deion Sanders or, you know, because some or some J- Jordans back then cost like one twenty five, yeah. some shit like that. And my mom couldn't really pay, you know, couldn't really do afford or whatever. So my aunt and and like older cousins shit would would buy me that shit if I, you know, cut the grass or did this or did that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then when I when I got older i saw, i was i was on, when i was on the internet and saw some vapes and didn't know what they were i did not know what the hell they were yeah i just thought it was a nike sign because at I that time niggas was niggas was doing like louis vuitton and gucci mm-hmm. on, on, on a the nike print. check oh, crazy yeah. off that shit. Yeah. so i just thought it was it was that i thought it was just a custom and then i found out what vape was and then found out it was like at the time it was almost impossible to get and, and then i found out everybody that was wearing them was wearing the fake ones and then I was like yo that and that that kind of triggered my me into like what a sneakerhead is now you get what I'm mm-hmm. saying and then uh through I was doing all that and I was like I ain't gonna ever be able to get none of them so fuck it and then I, the, like I saw these the Heineken dunks on in a magazine or maybe something slam magazine something thing. like that and I and then I uh I went trying to look for them and they was I could I, I couldn't find a pair for under like four hundred, and back then four hundred dollars was like impossible mm-hmm. to do. Mm-hmm. That's a lot. And the then I found I found a dude selling them for two hundred up in up at uh, state, just a random white boy up at state, and uh, I was like, Damn, niggas had everything up there. I'm like two hundred dollars. I'm telling at the time it was my fiance, now she's my wife. I'm like two hundred dollars. I ain't spending two hundred dollars on a pair of shoes. Like I ain't got it. And she was like, yo, but you work every day. You might as well. Like, sometimes you got to treat yourself. Say less, fam. <laughs> <laughs> I, was on, I was on the E-way, bro. Pulled up on my man. Dropped that 200 uh, like, bah. And ain't look back. Less. That's like, fucked up. Now That's 200, spending need. $200 on a pair of shoes. That, you know, like, a pair of Jordans is $200. Regular as hell. You know what I'm saying? Shit. But back then, it was like, and then that sparked it. Like, dog. Then I started seeing, like, damn, these shit's going. The price going up. I'm like, I shouldn't have worn them. They was going. They went up. From, they was at four hundred. Then they went to eight. Then they shot up to like over a G. Then niggas start asking them buy buy them off my feet for eight hundred. All that type, that kind of crazy shit. But I never sold them because that was a, that was the shoe that got me in this thought process of like. Do you still got that shoe? Yeah, I still got that. One. Yeah, I still got that. The, the that and uh, I got married in a pair of uh, grand pink vapes. Those are two shoes I never get rid of. I think I remember though. Yep, grand pink vape patent leather. So I used to think they was just fake forces, bro. Or yeah, babes. The first time I the seen first them nigga I seen bro. with him was was an Asian. Ain't nobody a cash. I had no babes and shit. Like it was just the oh, Asian God. nigga. We ain't but like you care said, what that was, nigga had on. We was yeah. trying to get the J's that came out well, on I Saturday. The name of the stores, bro. <laughs> it was so many fuck. stores just going crazy with the fake shoes. The fake, yeah. Like, that and that's why shit. I didn't fuck with them for the longest. Me, yeah. And then I got a crazy babe story, dog. So the, I never, I, you know, I was thinking like, man, they only they only sell the fake ones around here, so. We, I'll probably never be able to, and, they, and the the, uh, the fake ones was like $70 or something mm-hmm. like that, yeah. and then you would see the real ones up for like over a G sometimes, right? So I'm, we used to go to New York, well, I used to go to New York with my moms mm-hmm. and like my family, so we would leave at midnight on a Friday, get there Saturday morning, and shop all day, right? So we shop all day, we hitting the little bootleg uh, jersey mm-hmm. spots and all that crazy shit, Damn, and I had, I had, I had, I had, I uh, had, Two hundred and twenty dollars to my name. I had more, cause I, but I had been shopping all day. So we bought the. So we would do. We would shop all day, and about eight o'clock p.m., we would hit the road and go right back to the crib. So we made a wrong turn trying to find a tunnel or the bridge to get out of New York, and it was a dark street, and turned down the street, and I. I it was just black, right? And then it was just one b- white building with all these different colors and shit. And it was the vape store. 
and that bitch had just <laughs> that opened up. Crazy. That shit had just opened up. Like it was only open for like two days, and I I peeled, I rolled out of that car before <laughs> I before I even got a chance to tell my mom to stop because my mom was driving. I was in the back seat. I was out the car. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and it, it was crazy because it was like like if they closed at eight, it was like seven fifty four. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, I'm rolling out the car. I'm at the door. <laughs> I'm at the door like, y'all just keep this dry because there was people behind us and everything. I'm like, y'all got to come back around. When I got in that bitch, dog, and saw all that shit, it was like, dog, I'm in heaven. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is it. And I found a, I had $220, bro, and whatever the shoe cost with tax, it came up to $218, $218 bro, and some change. I slapped that 220 on the table <laughs> like, boom. Then we came back like a couple months later, and this is where I really start selling shoes because niggas saw that I had them now, and they saw that they was the real ones, and they was like, "Damn, man, bring me a pair back, whatever." Mm. So what I would do, so I would you go start at the tax game. Yeah, so I would buy them. Motherfucker, <laughs> <laughs> you motherfucker. So dude, I would I would buy I would buy two. Really, I would buy two pair, right? Then charge a little bit more than double. Just so I'm I'm getting my pair for free. Right. So I wasn't really trying to like no, pocket all that bread. I was just really trying to say, like, I just don't want to buy mine. Right. right. So but then the killer was I would wear them for months and months, or niggas would be like, damn Rose the nigga with those babes. Then I sell them for like two hundred because they were selling for four or five. Mm-hmm. So basically my my get back was off my used pair that I was selling for what I mm. what I didn't even pay for them was was retail okay. price you know okay. what I'm saying and then but then it's like it don't even matter because Ro got all the babes mm-hmm. so it don't matter that you don't see that one no more you right. get what I'm saying mm-hmm. oh well on my foot because like niggas already associate that shit with me so then nigga, I had like I had like three pair but niggas thought I had like twenty you know what I'm saying so it was like that reputation but I was just going out there. And niggas didn't know that that the babe store was out there, so I was. Was it in New York or Jersey? It was in New York. Okay. The first one was in New York on Martin uh, on Mercer Street, Nin- I think ninety one or ninety Mercer Street. So I was about to ask, um, what, what was your first pair of okay. shoes that you bought? Like you were saying, you cut grass and all that. Do you remember the first pair of shoes that you bought with your own money? Uh, not really. Not really the first pair. The first pair I can re- the first shoe that I can remember. Was the the uh, the Deion Sanders uh, uh, something turf mid? I forgot. The, like the white, white, red, and black, and it had the gold Nike sign. Mm-hmm. Air turf I mid, I believe. He go, he was supposed to go. Google but it was the Deion that. Sanders. It had the had the twenty one. That's a pair of shoes I never had. Bruh. I don't think I never had no Deion. Listen, man, that's crazy. We're out. We're, my day, mm-hmm. and pulling up to like, you know, one of the games. Like I I was in a, probably like. You know, eighth or ninth grade or something like that. I can't remember what year. Maybe even seventh grade. But we it was the the cross the cross city rival game was uh, Pontiac Northern versus Pontiac Central. But you know, we used to nah, dip up in there. Their diamond turf is that what it is? Yeah. Um, and we used to pull up. You know, even as youngins, we used to pull up in a game and niggas would be like, "Yeah, damn, dog." Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And uh, that was one of the first shoes that I'm like, "Yo, I have to have this." And I, and that's when I started really. Getting into like, yo, I come clean your kitchen. I come, you know, wash the dishes or do this or whatever and cut the grass. Them shit still sell for about 200 right now. Yeah. That's crazy. So, top five. We're going to do a, a few top fives tonight. Ooh. Top five sneakers. Uh, Like, that's like your sp- favorite top shoe? five, yes. That's impossible, bro. Not even, all right, let's do I'll brands. Go do brands. No, not even. I, what I can do, I'll do a silhouette, like styles of, like the, to me, the best shoe of all time is a low top Air Force One. Mm-hmm. Now, I look down too. I'm well, sick. I like, I'm yeah, a huge well, Jay Z. I, I remember. Rock, rock, yeah, well, the I Rockefeller see. joints. <laughs> uh, but to me, to me, it's it's kind of like the, the, uh, like the shape of it, the, 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 uh, the, the form, the, uh, it, it goes well with anything, right? Mm-hmm. You could wear shorts, you could wear, you could wear jeans. like jeans, Whatever. you could wear, you could wear tapered, you could, pants, you could wear, you know, bigger, like I don't say bell bottom, but like straight leg pants. Mm-hmm. You could wear whatever. It's, it's almost just like, it just sit like a pit bull, bro. It's like just this stocky ass, <laughs> just sturdy ass shoe. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So it's like that. Uh, the Air Force One, pretty much white on white, is like 
a no brainer. But uh, any pretty any any one of them that fit, you know, good good quality leather and all that other shit. It's crazy because that's elementary and middle school. That's all we wore, and you know, we had to find shoes outside of Foot Locker and shit. And we Bruh. had the shoe fair. Yeah. And they legit had all real shoes in there. Like Damn. me and my sister were the only ones who really knew. Like our neighborhood, the only ones who knew about it. Mm-hmm. And they was two for eighty. Oh, that's money. We yeah. was going in there cash. And that's crazy. Easy. Like all I used to get was a pair of black forces, a pair of white forces. Oh, yeah, that's what you get. Listen, it's, yeah. it's the school year, it's buddy. School year, bro. <laughs> yeah. It's the school year. Uh, Don't fuck them up. But I had the pit bull hustle, so I had a little money in middle school. So. The, them. Uh, Force lows, Air Force One lows, Jordan four, uh, Jordan Jordan six, Jordan four, Jordan six, uh, Air Max nine five. Nah, like Air Max one. Okay. Either one, like one ninety, either one or ninety. It's like depend on the time, the day. And then fifth is like, uh, um, I don't even know. Looking around, yeah, I don't even know, man. Oh, Jordan One, it's like okay. you know, yeah, Jordan One has become one of my favorite shoes, but my favorite Jordan of all time is Jordan Four. Man, we did the uh last episode, John Man Boss. I didn't even know the ones had so many different color schemes like oh, that, man. They were so crazy, <laughs> like because he go from numbers in a basement, uh-huh. and he oh, literally yeah. just have is more ones than any other shoe in the basement. Yeah, ones is basement. one of the crazy. Cla- most classic. Got top five, bro. Do I got a top yeah. five? Nigga, you like my f- favorite fucking shoe of all time. I don't know when I'm ever even be able to get my hands on them. Oh, yeah. What yeah. is it? Air Max. Yeah. I want oh, them yeah. bitches so bad. <laughs> <It was> like, <laughs> like, we, planned, we planned this camp out that never happened. Oh, man. We was about to. When they, <laughs> when they announced that they was. Y'all was ready. I was, going, yeah. I was ready. They never released, right? Ready. Not sure. I think they did, Not in, some, they did some type of auction or auction. lottery yeah. online or something. I was ready. Yes. I was ready to pay. Couple bands, yeah. like we stacked, like, we saved get. up and everything for. Yeah, we was ready, we was but prepared. It's, it's like it's so many shoes, man. I can't even. Yeah, it's tough. That's like even even what I just gave is doing everything like a disservice, man. Because it's Adidas that I love, Stan Smiths. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a lot. It's Reeboks that I still love. You know. Um, but yeah, it's a it's 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 a lot. So, bar, go ahead. All right, so. You was you 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 was the tax man yes, on the I shoes. Was. You was <laughs> the tax man on the shoes. For sure. You started a whole new culture. <laughs> right. And All right. So and, you got. And we were selling fake jerseys too. Oh, you was. I was off. too. We, yeah, hey, that was, was the hustle off. for sure. Yeah, was you traveled to New York. You was selling. I was selling. Back with something fake. I was selling fake CDs, Eagles. movies, and candy. My nigga, I yeah. wasn't breaking off into nothing else except that. Yeah. <laughs> that's no, we were selling fake all type of shit. So, you got a bar and um. What the fuck was the name of that song? It was that song with Sean called Tomorrow. You said my phone ring. You said my phone ring. It's my nigga Rick. This nigga talking about some kicks. Real story. Trying to talk kicks, man. The nigga broke his shit. My phone so, <laughs> so Rick, did Rick come across you as being like the shoe nigga? Is that how y'all met? Did he come across you as being the shoe nigga? It was like, hey, I got a, I got a play on the floor. Uh, yeah. Or how did y'all? How did that come across? So Rick was, so I was the I was the sneaker guy for right, real, for real. Right. You know what I'm saying? And then, but real recognized real. So he like, like I I had a I had a conversation. Like I went over Rick crib because he used to book us. He he was I think this was even before he got to like he was booking shows in high school at OU. So he wasn't even in college. Mm, he yet. wasn't even at OU yet. Yeah, but, okay. he, but he was booking shows over there and shit. So he would book us and then, That's and then the money, uh, <laughs> he, he booked us. And then when he got to OU, he started really, he was with the Black Student Union or mm-hmm. something like that, whatever that, the organization He's was called the plug up there. for sure, man. Yeah, so he would, and I, I was like the only DJ he really knew. So he would book me to DJ all, every event from every, every fraternity, every sorority, like, if, cause they would come ask him, like, you know, and then he would just, you know, link me up. So that that's how, like, through that, we started getting cool because then he, I realized he, you know, he stayed close to me. And then we just got cool. And then I went over his crib one day, and I was, I was crazy into, like, in the hype beats before anybody knew what that shit was. When it was just, like, a one-page, it was nothing. Mm-hmm. But uh, 
I was like, yeah, son, son, you said you heard about hype beats? And he was like, nah. So I showed him that shit. And then uh, I was, that's when the, the Tiffany Dunks first came out. And I was like, dog, I need them bitches. Could never get them. And then he had them bitches, like, a couple <laughs> weeks later. Like, damn, nigga. And then that's how, and then we would just always talk. And then this nigga is talking about, he, you know, he's just got a business mind he always has. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, my business mind, well, back then for sure, I could, it could, it could turn off. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, bro, I, you know, it's certain shit I'm not trying to talk about. You know what I'm saying? But he was talking about kicks and starting up businesses. and Because at the time, he was really cutting hair. So the first store we was about to, we was going to do, I, it was going to be a sneaker store that I own next to a barbershop. Mm-hmm. And we was going to, I can't even remember what we was going to call it, but it was going to be some fresh shit. And he used to always talk about that. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, bro, I'm not, I have not a dollar in my pocket. I'm going home to eat uh, a turkey bacon <laughs> egg and cheese sandwich. Bro. <laughs> and I only got two pieces of turkey bacon. I'm not trying to talk about this shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? But he's one of the f- people that kind of kept that shit in my mind. You know what I'm saying? It's like, because he would always talk about it. And then I started, uh, I started writing a business plan for to open a store called Sneaker Heaven. Don't ask. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but, not a bad name. You know. <laughs> <laughs> not a, but, not uh, a bad name. Yeah, I was going to open a store called Sneaker Heaven, and I had the whole business proposal, and I showed him. You know what I'm saying? He's like, yo, this shit is crazy. So then, fast forward, Burn Rubber opens up, and then he he kind of implements himself as, uh, like, the uh, he would start taking pictures. Th- that That's something he had never did before. You know what I'm saying? But he was like, he wanted to get in, and that's what he did. Start, and then he, he ne- had never made a website. Made a website. So then they said something about selling the store. And he was like, yo. Uh, and the first person he thought about, I already I had a business plan for a mm-hmm. sneaker store. So he came to me and was like, yo, he ain't really had a bread to pull the whole thing off. He was like, yo, you think you can come up with half? I'm like, shit, hell yeah. Had no clue how I was going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm I'll like, do hell it. yeah, we could use my business plan and we just start putting all that shit together. And it was just like. We called, they, well, we set up a meeting, and then, uh, with, like, with, it was like two months later, like, s- within 60 days, because I think the first meeting we had was right before Christmas, and, uh, and we had, we signed, the, we signed the lease, I mean, signed everything on February 14th in 2007, so it was about a little over 60 days, you know what I'm saying, okay. or not, or not even, yeah, like, right, right under 60 days, and that shit, and then, you know, you look up however many more years, and we here, right here, doing a podcast. You kind of ended up implementing that uh, that barbershop idea. I, I mean, I would come up here and not buy nothing and just chill for, for hours. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and for chill for and hours. And niggas used to cut hair in the back. And it was always right. The first one, niggas used to cut hair in the back. In the back back there. For sure. I remember that. And okay. it was yeah. always, it's it was just time. always something going on in here. Like, I just come and chill, not yeah. buy nothing, just be sitting here chilling. Yeah. Almost fought Juan Neal in here. It's just damn. you know, it was just uh, it I was always shit, yeah, bro. hey damn. yeah. <laughs> it, we cool it. now, yeah, 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 yeah we yeah, cool yeah. now, yeah, yeah. That was we cool now. But that, but that was, was the whole some thing, shit. Man. Our whole thing. We beefing on Twitter. I ran into that nigga. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm 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 not for the talk. Let's, let's go, <laughs> <laughs> let's go. We, uh, back then it was a so thing. We just shit. we wanted people. To, we wanted the we wanted you to feel like you was going over your your uncle house or your cousin crib. You yeah. know what I'm saying we could talk about. Religion. We could talk about, uh, you know, sports. We could talk about anything, and, and still keep, you know, for the most part, keep it yeah. respectable. Mm-hmm. You know, respect it, and then dap each other up at the end, and you know, we be back. We be back here tomorrow. We go. We gonna be here right. We're talking this shit, so right. y'all come through. Right. You know. So where did uh, Burn Rubber name come from? Uh, they it was there. Like we we bought the store from oh, our okay. owner. So, you know, it's just. Uh, the, the the thing about Detroit is uh, car, you know, the car culture. Mm-hmm. The only thing that you could really associate sneakers and cars with is the rubber, the rubber. tires, burning rubber. Mm-hmm. And so that's kind of that's how they got it. Now, how, how did you find out about the spot? What the burn rubber? Yeah, that state. Um, so I, yeah, so I found out about it through Cliff. Mm-hmm. How did y'all come across? Sure. How did y'all come across? <laughs> 
How did y'all come across Cliff? Shit. He had every color. Because because I I, I, I equate Cliff. Cliff got me in here, so then he got me locked in with you. Yeah. He got me locked in with Rick. They got me. Cliff is like that piece that got me locked in to a lot of different things that I wouldn't even be Was involved he a in. Or anything? That I wouldn't be involved in had I not yeah. met him. Nah, uh, so Cliff, he used to go hard. Uh, yeah, like <laughs> yeah, Cliff was like little. He, he, you know, he was like little bro. Um, Cliff okay. was like. Uh, so my my mom and Cliff's mom, my, Cliff's mom is a judge. Mm. Well, I don't know if she still is, but she was a judge, and uh, my mom was was is a court uh, court stenographer. You know, so the lady that types everything mm. everybody saying. So then That's she had started. Crazy. She had started uh, managing the the whole court, or she was like, I forgot what the title was. So I've known Cliff ever since I was I was little. Right. You know what I'm saying? And then uh, and he, you know he's from Pontiac, same side of town. We grew up on the same side of town, but he was just always younger. Um, then Rick taught Cliff, like uh, I might be wrong, but I think he taught Cliff like tap dance or something. Like mm -hmm. Rick, Rick's a, a professional tap dancer. Okay, and he taught tap. And uh, I want to say he, you know, Cliff was in tap, and that's how they met. So he used to, uh, you know, he just he, he was, was mutual. A, yeah, mutual. He had a yeah. love for what what we was doing. He right. fucked with sneakers at the time and all that shit. And then um, we we wanted somebody that we felt we could trust because I was still working when we first started. I was still working a job, and then uh, and Rick had quit his job because he he was like a telemarketer, like something he hated. Mm -hmm. So he quit. And, and at the time, Rick didn't have any kids, and I had just had a daughter. So I'm like, man, I can't just – because we wasn't making no money like the first – I don't think we put $1 in our pocket, pocket for like the first uh, eight to ten months or something like that. Okay. Uh, a lot so of niggas don't understand Entrepreneurs – hey, I was just about to say. Niggas don't understand Listen to what that, he just said, please. Jesus yeah. Christ. Not $1. I mean, you was the first person that told me. You know, I told you I was about to open the trailer. You like, hey, don't expect to make no money your first year. Yeah. And <laughs> and for real, do it. For real, do it, but just don't. <laughs> don't don't you, don't set the sights on a that. lot of people it's like the first three years yeah you know what i'm saying it's tough you know but luckily you know by the grace of god hopefully uh you know you've, you've developed something that is able to generate some money mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying uh so then that's what it was and then you know our whole thing was man what we wanted to do uh you know in a perfect world the idea is to you know, we looked at Dame Dash and we looked at, at, at Diddy and we looked at Hove and all these people. And it's like, you know, it starts at a place mm -hmm. and then you implement people into it. And then those people can hopefully one day, like if, if, if you know, he moves to Wisconsin and wants to open up a store, mm -hmm. like why not open up a burn rubber? And right. then we could become a partner, mm -hmm. you know, and then whatever. So he just, he embodied everything we, 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 uh, we were, or we, you know, uh, the whole like the whole motto of everything and then one thing about cliff that we're not even the greatest at is is uh starting starting conversations or start or like starting uh relationships you know what mm -hmm. i'm saying because the thing about like rick isn't like rick can talk to anybody right it's what it's, and now you know we're older now so a lot of things different but back then you know once you set it up rick is going to okay. make sure the deal happens right i am i always have this like artist mentality where like you know meek mill don't go up to the people vision. bro you know what i'm saying like you know his manager goes and, and does that and he mm -hmm. performs so that's kind of how i was and cliff was the person that was like if kid cuddy is at the royal oak music theater he's gonna, he get, gonna go talk to yeah, him he's gonna get, he gonna get backstage <laughs> yeah, set it up. yeah and he's gonna get him a t-shirt and he's gonna talk to him and the next thing you know they're gonna be at the store and he's gonna yeah. be shopping Chris Brown, like whoever the case may be, he was the oh, one yeah, that was. Y'all shut this bitch down. Breezy I was about came, to say, so, and over. I feel yeah. like a lot of people too <laughs> don't understand that as well. You talk about the hustle of going to these areas and making sure that these artists are getting your brand and stuff. Do you feel like that's important still to this day? Yeah, pro probably even more than ever. Um, it's, but it's probably even tougher, tougher now than it has ever been because so many artists. You know, so so much bullshit happened to a lot of artists that they mm. they have to put a uh, like a wall up around themselves. You know what I'm saying? So it has to. Normally, it comes from a, some type of relationship. You know, like oh man, such and such. I went to school. <laughs> like, I went to college with dude, and now he managed Shoreline Mafia. You know what I'm saying? And he come to Detroit, and he was like, "Who? Where should I go?" And he's like, "Burnt Rubber." All right, well, tell him to hit me up. You see the uh, shit with Fifty? 
Yeah, when Buddy ran up on you, about yeah. to get, yeah, yeah. It be like that. But the thing is, it's, which is fucked up, but it's like, how many niggas have you seen say, hey, man, spit a verse, mm. and then a nigga come from the other side and knock him out? Right. You know yeah, that's a, <laughs> that's a fact. Like, that's damn, a fact. bro, you, you know, doing dumb ass for no shit, reason, bro, like, you know, just to get some look, some likes or some looks on, on, on the gram or whatever. Yeah, you know can't be as welcoming. Well, um, man, a few artists. You said Chris Brown was here? Yeah, Chris Brown came through. Cuddy. It was the craziest. Well, not the craziest. Chris Brown came through. It was crazy. It was insane because sure. we was at that little store, and all the little we like we thought the con- like well the concert was over. So he came out. He came through after the concert. So we opened the store for him, and uh, somehow like he was just in there, and the, like one little girl walked by because remember the old store had that big ass mm-hmm. window, and it was a super small store. Uh, so it's one girl, one little girl walks by and she's like, yeah, right. And then another girl. And then it was like 400 little girls banging on the window, bro. You know, little girls and, and I'm sure superstars are the craziest yeah. Y'all animals. Y'all crazy no shit. security or nothing either. Chasing no, well, he, shit. Had, he had security. He had his security. But we, it was just like, like. Cliff Y'all went, just going to just. Yeah, Cliff went to the show. Cliff, woo, woo, and then Cliff hit us up when they was about to leave and. Well, he he hit us up when he was like he, they're coming down. So me and Rick both like, we was at the crib, I believe, and we just kind of came down and we was in there chilling. And then they came through the you know through the back door, whoop de whoop. And he was in there for like 10, 10 minutes, and you know his people were shopping, he was shopping, and it was just like yeah. And, he, and we look around like damn. And then they just beating on the window. I'm like, listen, y'all, <laughs> your mama not gonna pay for this. And uh, yeah, that was crazy. Uh, like pretty, I mean. Fabulous, uh, the clips. Um, Damn, you remember Chester French? What the fuck happened to them? Who? Chester, Chester French, French, bro. What happened came to them? Through. Yeah. I have no idea. <laughs> them niggas. <laughs> Chester French. <laughs> kids in the hall. Remember? remember kids in the hall? Yeah, bro. Them niggas uh, came through. <laughs> uh, cool kids. Niggas, Mikey right? Rocks. Chuck mm. English. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Sean, of course. Uh, back then at that store. You know what? I got a, I got a question about that. Uh, I was about to go ahead. You was about to go there? Yeah. Sean and Mike Posner. Posner. All right. Oh, man, what happened to Posner? They used to rock. He's walking across. Yeah, he's walking across the world right now. I right. Gotta, like this moment. We'll, we'll, I seen that. I'll oh show it gosh. to you. <laughs> go ahead. They, uh, Posner, first guy to wear Burn Rubber National TV, right? He no. Was on, no, that wasn't the first person? Who was? Sean. I think, yeah, Sean was. On oh, what, Jimmy? No, no, no. Oh, you talking about like well, on Kimmel? On like, the show? On yeah, on, 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 on national TV. Been, it might have been Posner. Like on that, okay. Sean, on national Sean, TV. Sean, Sean, Sean used to rock sure. that shit all the time. Oh. But, but Sean, the first time Sean, Sean had just, his first trip, like, like he had got signed, but, you know, niggas really didn't know. Right. Or thought, like, they'd been hearing, but yeah, he, he hadn't was, really done anything. He was like still crazy. up at State and shit like that back and forth. Yeah, yeah. but he, he ended up, he came to the store and was like, uh, bro, I got this. He said, he, he called me and was like, I got a. Can you come? Can you come down? Open the store because I'm going out of town in the morning, and I got. I need some shit to rock, right? So then I get. I was like, yeah. Got up on my bed, came down here, and he was like, uh, so I'm like, what you got? Like, where you going? And he was like, uh, I think like the MTV award show in Japan. I'm like, damn, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, whoa. So he buy all this shit, right? He do all this shit, and I gave him. Uh, I gave him like. Something I think something of mine, like something that I had of mine that was burn rubber, right? Exclusive shit. And then like two days later, this nigga. Have you ever seen the picture of this nigga on uh, at the Bape store on it's the it's the them lit, them lit up stairs at the Bape store in Japan with Ye, Pharrell, and Nigo. Yeah, it's that picture. That that like th- that day before, like that's where he went and he <laughs> took that picture. And then he got back, and I'm like, nigga, you was with Pharrell and, and Nigo? You know what I'm saying? And he was like, yeah, man. I just, <laughs> I was like, you whole ass nigga. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But he, you know, it, you know, he probably didn't even know at the time what was, was really going, going on. Yeah, yeah. It, cause they was rocking that shit all the time. Was they endorsed, or they just was rocking that shit out of out of out of love? Who, uh, Shiner? Yeah, cause they was rocking no, that they said shit. They came in here and bought this shit. No, they bought, like, no, no, but I'm no. saying it was everywhere. So he was, was rocking was, that it shit. It was like, three people. It's three people in the history of Burn Rubber that have uh, that have ne- have never. Well, I can't say never, but 
have had access to pretty much everything we've ever done, right, for free, right? The first person is Marv One, and and every one of them is because we we tried to give the we tried to give them uh whatever like Marv was like I got a battle and I'm like here nigga take a hat wear a hat mm. and he was like nah fam I'm gonna buy it and I was like nigga you would never buy another hat from me again mm -hmm. right That's he wore I'm that saying. bitch it got seven trillion views or some crazy it was like one of his craziest battles mm -hmm. and then I was like bro you would never like any every hat that come in you come get it. it you know what I'm saying then uh Mike Posner Mike Posner and Sean was like, like Sean had just got signed and he bought his first couple things when we tried to give him something. Mm -hmm. That was a whole thing that was like, Once you Posner, that. same thing. Like we tried to give him, they was like, nah, bro. And then they got to a point where I'm like, you know, you know, this $45, $50 you spent on his hat. You nigga, you, the, tomorrow you next to Justin Bieber, dog, and the shit is getting crazy looks and then our shit blowing up. You know what I'm saying? Like it, at one point we had, uh, we had release dates for our hats. Like that's yeah, how no, crazy I, they I could were. never get one. That's how crazy they yeah, were. Listen, is a. I wasn't in my bag at state. I'm gonna just say that Michigan State. I was not. I used to fucking love this story. Financially, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I used to just go on the site and shit and just whatever, whatever it was, and I just used to just have to look at the shit, bro. Yeah, that's real. Go to South Beach, or like Nick and the Finding Famous. Nick, what's uh light skin dog? What's my man's name? They hey, dub. No, nah, he was low key. Brandon. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, not, I'm out there with them and shit, and they got all the shit. I'm just mad as fuck. Like, I could never get the damn chef shirt or hat, bro. Yeah. Man, I used to piss. Yeah. That, so, that, I mean, that was, that was, so it got, like, it got to the point with Sean and, uh, Sean and, uh, Posner that we, like, those were the, like, really the only artists that we sponsored mm -hmm. to the point where, like, we were pushing them. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, we helped him out with with, a, with his mixtape when he ain't had no bread. You know what I'm saying? We bought like I want to say two thousand mixtapes one time. We really didn't have the money like to for that either to to like give away. But you know we made it happen and and uh you know man that's a lost art like this type of shit <laughs> that that, that because... we hearing it's, it's it's a lost art, bro. Like yeah. it just seemed like niggas don't do that no more. I just feel like some do when they can. But I like I, because I, I said earlier, I know a lot of people that got them, and I'm just like, are y'all going to these locations to at least try to network or at least give your product up? And it's just like, nah. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. I think some people, some people do, you know. Uh, but I, I, like, I think back then, it was more of like a, a like a hustle. You know what I'm oh, saying? That's like a hustle to it for sure. Like Cliff, like Cliff, Cliff was a in, in that aspect was a, he like. He might not have a ticket to get into the concert, but he found a way, a way to get to in. get back and be we the need, only person backstage. I with, just saw uh, a clip today, man. I went and got some of that pizza. That shit was fucking amazing. You know, and uh, and nowadays, like probably the the in in, our, in this area, who is you know the the best at that, and I, I would I would kind of believe a lot of it is based on relationship, and then uh, you know I, obviously people wanting the product is uh. Uh, Will plugged in Will from Detroit versus everybody, mm. Mm. like that nigga okay. is uh, he gets that shirt yeah, he to get that shit everybody everywhere. from Kenny Chesney nigga to the hardest thug most thugged out nigga you ever seen in your life you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying but he covers he covers all that you we know talked about that on the show too how important like how simple a brand can be but it depends on the person yeah and your hustle your views and everything it's all about take i think it's and all being about a solid, what that a solid guy yeah mm -hmm. and what oh, that yeah. brand means like if i'm wearing this what what you know what what am i exemplifying with quality too. you know what i mean yep, yeah quality all that like everybody can slap a logo on a shirt if you don't have any type of connection to it yeah. it's not gonna matter at the yep. end of the day but yeah, being solid from the jump helps a lot. Like you yeah. said, you know, trying to give this product away, doing these types and of things, that type of stuff like helps. Just support, just these help people. Uh -huh. man. Your partner Rick, right? Yeah. Was he more behind the scenes, as far as like when there's crazy shit going on? You got these artists. Like, how were how was y'all reaction? Because again, y'all new to this. Was y'all like, oh shit, or did y'all kind of hold y'all composure, like being y'all selves? Was y'all ever starstruck? No, 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 no. The only I, there's only one time I've ever been starstruck, and I and uh, but to answer the question, 
the one thing about both of us is that we're both natural leaders. You get what I'm saying? Like, it's not much. I've even back then, like I had seen uh, so much that it's it, you know it's kind of hard to impress. It's kind of hard to impress me. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, even if you're doing some crazy shit, bro, it's like I've seen I've seen something similar. You know what I'm saying? And but even past that, we're all, we're both we're both leaders. So you're not gonna really sway us mm-hmm. into into like changing our thoughts on certain things. And at the end of the day, every one of these people are human, just like I am. You know, and it's it's like, yeah, you might have more money, but what the you, you know, you put on your jogging pants, how I put on my jogging pants, bro. You know what I'm saying? You get into it with your girl, just like I get into it with my girl. You know, so it never that never was really anything. Hey, girls, stop making us get into it with y'all. Yeah, kind of that shit, man. But the up. the crazy the, the the only time I ever was like it was two times. It was two times. Uh I saw Allen Iverson one time in Vegas, uh at a at a at a hotel. I was at, at, at the Magic Trade show and one of the one of the brands had a um their showroom, it was like in a hotel room. And uh I was I was walking through and we was trying this was like back when you know, this it would be in a in a uh, like a conference room normally. Mm-hmm. So then we was looking for we was trying to find this. We had never really been in those kind of hotels, and those hotels that had like four different elevators on going to the sides. And you know what I'm saying? The place so we too. looking around and we looking for this elevator, and we end up in like I think it was like the Wynn Hotel, which is one of them crazy expensive hotels. Mm-hmm. And we looked like we was not supposed to be there. Jeans, t-shirts. And, <laughs> yeah, it's expensive to travel with Rose, but. Not yeah. back then. No, no, it was fuck the, that. Hey, I wasn't staying in the encore <laughs> out of wind. I was staying in the Luxor, nigga. You feel bro. me? <laughs> but so I, I bro, <laughs> continue. I got a, I, I see I got a story. Elevator. I see the elevator, <laughs> and I was like, damn, I'm like Rick, he go to the elevator, and I turn, and it's Allen Iverson, dog, the fucking goat, like the like the most regular Timberland. <laughs> Big white T-shirt ass, <laughs> do rag with with braids still. How many chains did he have on? Seventy seven. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, dog. And I just was like, man. I said, dog. That's, I'm like, nigga, that's AI. And it wasn't even like a lot of people. It was like him, a a, a chick and a and like a he dude, he which kind of looked really like his manager. A lot of people around him. Like and that. I was just like, pushed the elevator and was like, got on the elevator and went up. Yeah, I didn't say nothing, dog. I don't ever say shit either, bro. Hey, bro, I heard a tough story of a nigga talking to AI. For real? I, I, I seen, I seen, we seen uh, Mayweather in Vegas, man. I seen Mayweather. Yeah, so. You said something to him, he's acting like man, I, I just like said, I don't say shit to uh, nobody. <laughs> I was like, right here with Ildris Alba in South Beach. and say shit. I probably won't say shit to him either. I fuck with dog, though. I do too, but I won't say shit yeah. to him. Like, uh, just, just and then the other, the other one was LeBron. We was on a oh, the fuck. we was on an elevator at a, at another it was, around, it was around that same time they was playing in Vegas for like the national the, the world games or something like before you go to the Olympics or some shit like mm-hmm. that and uh, we get off the elevator nigga and go down go you know we going down because we on like whatever floor going down and the door opens no I'm sorry that we're waiting for the elevator to 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 come right and then the door opens. And I'm talking shit. I'm talking to Rick. Like, we just kind of talking, shooting the shit. The door open, nigga, and it's LeBron big ass on there. I'm talking about this nigga. It was like, I had never seen a person, like, in person. Like, I've seen, like, tall niggas. Mm -hmm. I've seen, like, like big big niggas. niggas. But I never seen, like, no tall, big nigga. (laughs) Like, he really that, like. Bro, this nigga's shoulders is the widest. His shoulders is... It's, it's unreal. And we was talking, and, I, and the door opened. I looked up, and I was like, oh, shit, what up? And we got on the elevator and turned around. And just looked, and we looked down the whole time. And this nigga was talking. This nigga, and this is when he was he was young. But uh, he was showing the league, and this nigga said some of the most arrogant shit I ever heard in my life, bro. Oh, his, his manager, was, or his, the guy that was with him, was asking him, like, uh, so what we doing tonight? And he was like, whatever. You know what I'm saying? So like, he, my man was saying something about this this club, this, this whatever. And he was like, that's cool. And Buddy was like, uh, so we VIP tonight? He was like, VIP? Wherever I go, I'm VIP. 
I can Damn. go. I can go sit on a stoop outside and that's VIP. He said. I said, man, and I'm thinking like you young. Shout out to Bronny Jr. Rich <laughs> ass nigga. You young VIP ass. Everywhere you go, ass nigga. Bro, that nigga bro. said, he if said I go shit. on the stoop, he said, I go sit outside on the stoop and that's VIP. Of course, come on, man. This nigga Cliff used to like, you know, throw like the little college shows and shit. Um, we went down to Ohio. Fly Union was performing after party. Oh we up there. This nigga LeBron is up there. Tall as hell. Yeah, tall as fuck. I'm like, damn, you know, this was back. He was with Cleveland, obviously. So uh yeah, this nigga was a nice guy. Like, he just shook hands, like, hey, what's up, man? Y'all good? Y'all need anything? Nigga was super cool up there in VIP, man. Just yeah. like uh, that's when I fucked with LeBron. That's, yeah. that's when yeah, I fucked with LeBron. It was just like he was he was just <laughs> he a nice. Was super cool I'm up like, there damn, this nigga a nice ass guy. Yeah, hand was big as shit. Like Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Like Jesus no, Christ! No, I've heard. I, that's Fuck the only that nigga time Nato. I. That's the only yeah. time I ever really came across LeBron. But I heard he's one of the most down to earth people. So he was in VIP with LeBron. Yeah, bro. For you sure. have a party with Puff? Nah, never. I don't plan on it. <laughs> <laughs> don't plan on it. Don't plan on it. Don't plan on it. Not but traveling with this nigga. Yeah. This nigga. But, I wanted to go to one of the. Let's go to trade shows okay. with him. Oh, like yeah. fuck it, come on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What year come was through. it though? What, Bro, was I don't it know. Early burn rubber or was it mid burn rubber? Mid, mid, mid. 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 Okay, so we he like he like you can you roll. Your he bag like, and mid. Was yeah, you? we was in, yeah, yeah. We he was like, clicking <laughs> on all cylinders. Nigga <laughs> like doing shoes, all type of shit. Yeah, he like let's roll, nigga. Good time. I'm like bet, you know. So uh -huh. I grab the flight, all that. I'm like, what? How much should I bring? <laughs> nigga said. <laughs> Uh, I bring fifteen hundred just to gamble. Uh, I said, "All right, hey, uh, hey, hey, uh, hey, hey, this nigga." <laughs> I said, "I'm at sit this out just to gamble." Uh, Fuck hey, bro, you, hey, bro, I said, "I had to be fucking with you." Bro. Hey, bro, no, I said, "I'm at to sit this one." <laughs> <laughs> I had to be fucking with you, bro. I, I, Fuck you know, eating. Do I say something? Because I'm like, how much? You know, it's what's, what's up? Fitzy, I said, damn. Like, Hell I no. don't even think like I ain't even got it. I'm, I'm, I ain't even got to gamble. But I'm like, shit. If he doing fifteen hundred just to gamble, we probably about to be eating. I'm probably was fucking with you. All bro. the tops, oh <laughs> shit. I'm like, I'm gonna have to wait. I had to have about three bands in Vegas <laughs> traveling with this nigga. I, I was still on the broke Vegas trips. We, we get down man, there, get to the clubs at 10 o'clock. <laughs> get to the clubs at 10. Like, yeah, yeah we in here. Being there free. Yeah. Being yeah, that bitch yeah. before. Yeah, yeah, right. Right. Yeah. You ready to go like a motherfucker? That's funny. Uh, DJ. Yeah. My first love. That's my first love. Well, um, who influenced that? Uh, who influenced DJing for me? Uh, my cousin One Below. One Below is uh, any, everything, everything fresh is he. It, it was influenced by him for me. Mm -hmm. Going back to when we, the was, shoes when we was kids, and just everything. Yeah, he was like he's the freshest nigga in the world. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just period to me. Um, so he used to he was rapping in high school i was in like junior high school or whatever or you know maybe like ninth grade or something and uh he ended up when i when i got to i forgot what year like 11th grade he went to jail right so i was like man i wanted i wanted to rap but i just i was, wasn't good at it you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying but it was i never really sat down and tried to do that shit. and then uh so i like wrote this rap it was weak as hell and i uh <laughs> So then when he and then so when he got out of jail, I was like, I was super into like just hip hop shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just being had all the music. And um he was he said he was like uh when he got out of jail, he said, Man, I'm about to do this shit, this binary star shit, which doesn't name his group. He's like, I'm about to really do this shit and uh, you know, you can roll with me and just know that if if I'm if I'm getting to it, you getting to it. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, yo, this is my way into whatever I'm a be that you wanted to do you know what i'm saying that's that, that's gonna be it so i ended up uh i wanted to rap but i was i was scared of like public speaking i was scared to like stand up in front of people and talk so i was like well uh the way i can do good get around that is to dj i can stand up in front of people but i don't have to say nothing mm -hmm. so i started dj and i and i had all the music and then all them niggas could really rap so I was like, so then I started getting cool with their DJ at the time, and then he started showing me shit, and then I started going to the record stores and you know met House Shoes and all these other guys, and then uh, their DJ 
moved, like he got was getting married and moved out of town. And uh he was like, Dog, if you he's like, you may not be that dope right now, but as long if you commit to to like honing your craft and getting better mm-hmm. and getting better with the scratches, getting better with the blends and all that shit, uh you, you with me. You my DJ. You know what I'm saying? He was like, and if a nigga say something, don't even I'm a, you know, a nigga ain't gonna say nothing. Right. And then, uh, and then I was like, that's all I needed. And then I got, I started getting better and better and better. And then it was like, I, I was, I would DJ and I got good at DJ and I, and I could see how you could control the crowd. You know what I'm saying? How you could like, I used to DJ, I used to be at, uh, when I used to DJ them parties for Rick, like if I, uh, if I wanted to have fun, I would, we would just, we would have fun. Right. It was sometimes that I'm like, I, I, I don't want to be here. I want to get to the crib. And I knew it was like five songs that I could play that I shut the party down. It was like two. It, I, it was two Lil John and the Eastside Boys songs, a Three Six Mafia song, and like two Dipset songs. However, I played them, and the fight, it was a fight. Mace, we we wrapping up. We, we, had, <laughs> we had the crib at eleven thirty. My bad, bro. Yeah, Yo, my yeah, bad. Yeah, Cause yeah, this, I, I brought this up. The millennial tour, the B Two K tour and shit. And I just said, everybody going crazy. I said, if Lil John hosts a concert with that era, it's over. Shit would be yeah. crazy, boy. Like, yeah. But I, yeah. I had, I, so I had those five songs. And I was <laughs> like, I see matter. how, like, you can you can send a nigga home as a, a good DJ. <laughs> you can send a nigga home ready to fight, ready to fuck, as good. or ready to, it was one other thing I would always say. Fight, fuck, and something else. You know what I'm saying? And it's and it's because of how I feel. It's because of how I feel. You go to the party, and you got you got you with your people, and I could play certain things, and you gonna be on the hose, right? Right. I, you could go to a party. You could be feeling a certain way, drinking the same thing you was drinking. Two days later, come with your fellas. Certain music you hear. In ten minutes, you outside with your shirt off, like nigga, what up? <laughs> Period. Right. You know what I'm saying? So when I realized that, and that's, I realized I kind of had that, like, kind of that gift of that power, I was like, uh, you know, now I'm at the point where I, I want to say stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, sometimes I would act like I was trying to stop the fight. Like, dog, chill. <laughs> <laughs> while, while my man's pulling cl- pulling cords out and shit and wrapping shit up. Like, dog, why you hit old dude? Why, dog, chill. Y'all chill. The police coming. <laughs> Everything clear. So I started talking on the mic. And Packing shit. up. <laughs> yeah. And then I was like, and then I was with my cousin one day and uh, I was in the studio and I would be, I had been writing and I had been freestyling. I was getting high with my niggas freestyling and shit. And I was rapping one day going crazy. And my cousin walked in. Cause I didn't have, I didn't want him to know I could rap cause he was like the epitome of rap to me. You know what I'm saying? Of like niggas I knew. And uh, he, he walked in the door was open and he walked in one day and sat there. I was going for like 10, 15 minutes off, all off the top. And that nigga was like, dog, like you got it like that. And I'm like, I, shit, I guess, you know? And he was like, man, why then? Like I talked to him one day. He was like, bro, why would you like, why? I get that your, your friends, right? I get mm-hmm. y'all, you cool with these niggas, but they like, we're doing shows and touring and shit. Like, why would you, why wouldn't you rap tell us, us you rap? Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, why don't you rap with us? And you can get paid to do this shit. And I was like, damn, I, I was just waiting for you to say I was dope, pretty much. Or waiting for somebody to tell me I was dope that I cared about, you know? And then um, I was at the studio with him one night, and then he was beat playing. He was like, man, you got a verse for this? I'm like, hell yeah. Did not have a verse for it. I just picked a verse, spit the verse. And then the, that next day we had a show in Chicago, me and him, I was DJing for him. And on the way to Chicago, he was like, dog, you remember that verse from last night? I'm like, yeah. And he was like, I want you to come out. I'm going I'm to I'm do that song, and I want you to come out and grab the mic and start rapping. And I was terrified, bro. <laughs> I was terrified. The whole time, I'm sp- I spit the verse. That is some shit to just put you on blast. Though, I spit, but sometimes you got to throw a nigga in the fire. You got to. So I spit that verse from Ann Arbor to Chicago. Four and a half hours or however long it takes. Over and over and over and over and over. And nigga, I was shaking like a motherfucking leaf. Right, and that nigga said, son, 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 I want to bring my DJ out." I walked around that bitch, grabbed the mic, and was like, "I never want to DJ again." I was like, mm. crowd went crazy. Niggas was like, "Oh shit!" I got that feeling of like that. It's like that drug. Like I need this shit every yeah, time. Yeah. And then uh, 
And then I pretty much, for, for like a, about a year, I did a couple more songs with my crew. And then at the end of every show, I would come around. I would, then I would come around and do my, I had like the last verse on the last song of the, of the set. And then I would stage dive and it would be crazy, you know. And then I started wanting to do my own shit. Started rec- I started recording my own music. And then it started doing the Octane and Elite shit. And then the rest is history. So you know. is this before Burn Rubber? Mid? It's way before this Burn way Rubber. way before, okay. Way before Burn Rubber. That was, uh, he got out of jail. I, I graduated in high school in 97. He got out of jail in like 98. And so like at 98, 99 is when we really started pumping. About 2002, I was rapping. About, you know, 2003, four, I was rapping and DJing. And like, oh, four, oh, five is when I started like strictly being, just rapping, rapping. and doing shows and shit. And what, you was about to say something? Nah, nah, go ahead, go ahead. So rapping and DJing, who, who was you listening to when you first started? Started r- DJing? Rapping. Oh, rapping? Um, Super East Coast. Okay. Like, uh, wait, East wait. Coast and South. East, East Coast and South. Like, it was crazy because I, I was like a big Jay-Z guy. And like, but I, I, I didn't, I didn't like uh, Mob Deep. I wasn't really a big, I like Method Man. I wasn't really a big Wu-Tang fan. Uh, you know, fuck with Red Man Heavy. A lot of the Biggie, Mace, like a lot of the East Coast shit on that, on that realm of things. But then my cousin, who a couple, he's a couple years older than me. He was heavy into uh, East Coast shit as well. But it, with him, it was more like, uh, like, like the, super grimy like mob deep mm. wu-tang and all that stuff and i used to hate i used to be in the car riding with him like dog well, this nigga turn this shit <laughs> off bro like damn but then i was like i started hearing prodigy and i'm like this nigga is incredible yeah. you know what i'm saying and then i started listening to wu-tang and then it was all that and then i always fuck with like uh uh outcast and you know like southern shit like that and then i was super ratchet i am still super ratchet so anything like you know, I used to love Master P and anything No Limit did. Mm. Just the most ratchet shit. Like, uh, City Girls, I can do no wrong. I love City Girls. They can't do no wrong. They can do <laughs> nothing wrong. <laughs> so let's let's do a couple comparisons then. Uh, Jay-Z or Nas? Jay. Cash Money or lo- No Limit? No Limit. Lil' Kim or Foxy? Kim. Let me see. Mm-hmm. Big or Pac? Big. Ice Cube or Snoop? Snoop. Damn, you said Ice Cube yeah. or Ice T? <laughs> Ice Cube. Ice, uh, Ice Cube or Snoop? Snoop. Still Snoop. The last two questions, though, are like 1A and 1B. You know what I'm saying? Like Or 1 and 1A. Mm. Like, it's, I, it's, it's Biggie because I'm more of into like, right. lyricism and bars and shit like that. And But Pac was like... I, that's not taking nothing away from Pac. He was still, like, up there, like, you know, probably two, like, probably like number two. And same thing with Cube is one of the most underrated MCs of all time. Period. And I fell right. in love with Cube and a lot of the shit that he did. But th- but Snoop is, in, is like, that shit that that nigga was doing on, on Doggy Style. I think it slept on. shit was, whew. Cube I mean, slept on. But Cube. I think both is. No, your your guy mom a big Ice Cube fan. That's why I oh, like yeah, so that she's. That's all Loves I had to Ice Cube. So yeah. I'm gonna take it back. Cube or LL? Cause those was the Cube. two that was just playing through the house all the time. Yeah, all the time Cube. I'm going with Cube. <coughs> Cube, Public Enemy. That's what she used to yeah, like listen T. to all the time, dog. Like, um, eyes on that heavy. Ti or Jeezy? Jeezy. Never was really a big Ti fan. Really? I like. I mean, you know, it was it was songs, but I never I never really got the I never really got the hype. Mm-hmm. But uh, I mean, I respect it, you know what I'm saying? But I, it was never really a big T.I. fan. But Jeezy was that nigga. This is my last one. 3 6 or Lil John and the East Side Boys? Uh, 3 6 Mafia. 3 6 was the one I hated listening to the car and wound up fucking with later on. Yeah. <laughs> I remember getting the car like, what the fuck is this shit? Bro? I was like, what the f- I was <laughs> looking at <laughs> this shit. What the fuck is, is this? <laughs> this is nuts. Yeah, These niggas, insane, wow. Bro. Yeah. Um, artist wise, do you compare yourself to any uh, artists like industry artists? Um, 
I don't. I don't. I don't compare myself to anybody. People I hear comparing me. It's funny. People that people I, people I hear comparing me to are people I don't really like. I'm not really. I'm not Seen a fan. What of. happens a lot? J Cole. Big Crit. I was about to ask you about like this nigga crit. Cole too. Crit, Since you was I, here, I was I about like, to ask this nigga about Cole. You know, people be like, I'm oh, like, damn, crit, dog. You know what I'm saying? He talking about so, damn. So how you how you how you feel about Cole and Kendrick? Uh, he get compared to Cole a lot, so he hate that shit too. Um, I'm not a huge Cole fan. It's a lot. There's a lot of gas to me around him. I mean, I'm not. I'm not saying this nigga no, can't. Is. No, rap. he's, a, it's just he's like, an incredible rapper. Yeah, it's just like, yeah. That, and, and you to know me, what I'm I told y'all he in the right era to shine. That's all. He's an incredible rapper, and that's it. He's a. Oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> not even incredible. I can't even say. Come on, man. I my nigga ride his back to the barbershop, bro. Don't, don't, don't. I can't don't even be say. Taking away and this is my truth. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm living in my truth. I, I don't. I think he's a really good rapper. I can't even mm-hmm. say incredible. I think he's a really good rapper, and that's it. I feel the same you know what way. I'm saying? And the thing is, it's like, now we're talking about. You know, you saying this is what he does, right? I can name you, you know, uh, at least five people without even thinking about it who do that better than him. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Shit, Kendrick, L's eyes, shit, Sean rap better than him. You know what I'm saying? Like it's a, a hand. It's it's uh, so many people that to me do that better than him. And I, and it's like I'm big on personality and, yeah, and, and your nothing. music. I'm I'm big on feel. I'm big on like. You know, a lot of it's like a lot of just Bring that intangible energy, things that nothing. you that I, to me it's like I just don't I don't get from him. You know what I'm saying? Crit, I think Crit is. I've heard some Crit songs that like I could listen to. You know what I'm saying? I've I've heard beats that niggas like Yo Crit did that. I'm like, oh, that's, oh, that's cool. <laughs> and that's it. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> bro, he act like Jay to me, dog. I swear to God, you act like bro, Jay. Bro, this like, nigga. Some um, of your responses, man. Bro, when I when I when I found out that he like rap and heard it and then i'm like i rap too you know what i'm saying and this was like when shit was pure trash so <laughs> mind you he speaks highly of you so he, he always oh, that's about fast. so he like show them how to write yeah, a real he, yeah for sure, for yeah. sure. that nigga like come come to the studio in pontiac so i'm driving up there every fucking weekend from mm-hmm. from state like nigga put me in the booth. Yeah, I know y'all was coming from state. Yeah, <laughs> I thought y'all was coming from the crib, bro. I, hell no, but bro. Because I always had a story. Like, well, I, I, I go visit. I go visit. Gotcha. Yeah, I go visit. But the first drive down, like when we would link up, <laughs> yeah. we'd be coming right from like from state to do that shit. Yeah, and um, I fucked with him because he wasn't never like like if I'm like coming out the booth like. So what's up? <laughs> like, uh, he like, be nah. like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get a combo? Nah. Like, he be like, nah. <laughs> hey, this nigga always would be like, you got the voice? Yeah. That's it. Okay. So the flow not there. You got the voice for it. Go, go in there. You putting too many words and too many sentences. He was just doing this shit out yeah. the the kindness of his heart. Like, so I'm like, shit. Once I had that verse, and you was like, okay. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, you getting you getting better. A nigga couldn't never tell me shit from then on. I think I elevated from that point. That's true. Like a nigga would be at state, be like, "Oh, slap trash." I'm like nigga, hell, roast bitch ain't my shit. Hot. Fuck what you talking about? <laughs> like, fuck what you talking about, bro? That was like that was like it. That's real. And it wasn't even until you had said I was getting better that Chef was started fucking with me. We yeah. used to be in there recording. Chef ain't used to say shit to us. That nigga used to be over there. He didn't used to say shit to Nothing. us at all. I Nothing. That. I remember that. Nothing. What up? Nothing like that. Exactly. Once once niggas started getting there, he he started to transition over to the studio side yeah, yeah, yeah. to like fuck with us. But yeah, like all, always, even from the business, even from the business standpoint, like you just you just a uh, uh, you're definitely a goal to uh, go beyond. Love, love, yeah. Appreciate so it. that's appreciate that's like I'm that's a, that's a uh, fact. I'm gonna shout somebody out at this time because I feel like the same um, Ty from Flagship. Ty, Ty, cool as fuck, man. man Ty oh, is yeah. the funniest nigga. Ty, I've cool. Met <laughs> Ty life, cool as shit. So, I've never met a funnier person. When I got life. back from state, I was trying to figure, like, you know, I'm big on do- throwing events and stuff like that. Yeah. Trying to do documentary stuff like that. And Ty, like, I walk in there. I mean, he know my older cousin. You know what I'm saying? I think they went to the same high school, some shit. Mm-hmm. I, um, and I didn't. We didn't even notice at the time. So I, I pitched like, you know, I'm into this. I like the brand. I've been wearing this. I think he did the first Run Detroit shirts, yeah, like the Run yep. DMC logo. Yeah, he was the first one. Yeah, for I sure. uh, cop that. And he remembered me for some reason. You know, once I, I feel like once I get the pitching, I'm you did cool. That photo shoot. 
Yeah, and he just he, that shit. he said, get whatever you want. Literally. <laughs> whatever. I walked out that bitch like this yeah. and I brought him back. He said, What the fuck is it? You know what I'm saying? I th- me bringing them back. Oh, you was cu- you was doing a photo just shoot. The, he said, grab whatever you want for the photo shoot. Yeah, yeah, nigga showed up back? with so much shit. I brought it back. Damn. And he fucked with me ever since, bro. That's it's real. Kinda just like how you say, like, you know what I'm saying? He's just like, I wasn't expecting none of this shit back. I took the shit to the cleaners and everything, brought it back, because I wasn't expecting that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And ever since then, it was like, that's solid. We was locked in. So, yeah, my yeah that nigga cool as shit. I'm bro. I'm bro. I'm bro. I'm bro. That nigga cool as hell, bro. Yeah. What are you talking about? Boom, boom. I had boom. a question about Pontiac, man. Mm. It's a lot going on crime wise up there. And me going up there, I feel like it, it's so small, too. Mm-hmm. Everybody's related. Everybody know each other. Did you have any situations where you was in a situation because of a relative or a friend? I mean, of course we do, but, like, something major. I got a lot of students that's going through that right now. Uh, No, I never I never really had no situations like that. Um Not for real. No, no I never really. Because, I, like I said, I was, I was like a – I was a leader – and a lot of my a lot of my family wasn't really into like a lot of lot like a lot of street shit. You get what I'm saying? Okay. Like my cut co- like I had a cousin who got murdered. I had a cousin that um I just realized this shit too. Uh after talking to one of my homeboys. Like I used to live I used to live on the west side of Pontiac, that's where I'm from. And on the west side of Pontiac, the projects is over there. Mm-hmm. Right? So the projects, all the project niggas went to this, the, that that junior high school, right? They had their own elementary school closest to a project, and then junior high school. They all went. We all went to the same high, junior high school, and they used to fuck with everybody. Mm-hmm. The project niggas was the grimiest niggas on the planet, right? They used to fuck with everybody, so everybody used to be terrified of these niggas. So I wasn't. I'm not like a fighting. Nigga. I wonder if that's taught. What? Like well, no, I think it's just, just saying y'all gotta beat them niggas to fuck with everybody. I right? think it's just environment, bro. I it think is. it's environment, it's, it's, it's socioeconomics, you know what I'm saying? Even back then, and the way they the way they came up, yeah. that they were in a they were in a place. Like I had I lived in a house in a in a neighborhood. So I you know, I go holler at my man's I go to my man's crib or whatever, but these niggas stayed on top of each other. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So they you know, so it's like boom, 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 we go we like if 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 you ain't got my back. Who got my back? Right. You know what I'm saying? So that, and it was just so many niggas. Uh, and my cousin, who was like a thorough ass nigga, uh, he used to he used to play football and like he went to junior high school with them niggas. But he was like a, just a thorough nigga. And them niggas didn't fuck with me, and really didn't fuck with my people like that. And I never knew why. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, why are these niggas? Like, I don't. I'm not saying I don't, I don't want them to fuck like fuck but with me. But what's the problem though? But why? Like I wonder. I always wonder why. You know. And then a lot of niggas would just always show me this this love and this respect, and it was because of my older cousin Augie. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And uh, but I I just realized that shit. So that's the closest thing to yeah. anything like that. And uh, I was always a leader, and and my cousins were like older than me. Mm-hmm. So even if they had beef. I ain't, you know, it wasn't, it. It wasn't yeah. you know, that was they shit. And then I was just all, always just like a, a cool laid back. Like I, I was trying to get on chicks and <laughs> dress fresh. Man, that's, that's all I was trying to do. You know what I'm saying? So I never really had beef like that. Uh, you know, not for real, for real. You know, sometimes, you know, my man's getting a fight. You got to, you know, you got to throw a punch or two. Social I mean? media. Mm. How you feel about it now? We all witnessed the beginning of it. Do you feel like it's a difference? Yeah, from where it started. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, I think it's uh, it's been it's been implemented into our all of our like way of living, which is a f- kind of fucked up thing. Brought a lot of people a lot of money. It's it's a, uh, brought a lot of people a lot of false hope. A lot of fakeness so it's like it's like good things and bad things about it i believe it's more bad and i yeah. believe that it um it's just it's it's like one of those things it's like i don't even got a really analogy it's just like a fucked up thing that you have to deal with you know what i'm saying and it and it, and it i think a lot of the issues that are going on with people a lot of people throw this mental health thing around 
you know, kind of throw it around more recently. Like mm -hmm. we was talking, like grow, us growing up, I never mm -hmm. heard Talk mental health. It. Like, you know, dude might be crazy, but you know, just cause you had a bad day, you, 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 like you, you suffer from anxiety now, you know what I'm saying? And I, and I, I'm not trying to take away from anybody's no, situations, right? But I, I really believe that social media is, is, is doing that, that to these kids. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I, like my daughter, my daughter, I had to take my, take her, her, uh, her Instagram away from, I, I cut her off from all that shit because she had started, she, like she was doing this art, this art, uh, like coding or some shit like that. Or like these, she was, in, she was, when she first got into art and she would, uh, she, like she would do something that was dope for what she, you know, for, for being at like seven or, or, or eight or something, or however old she was. And then she would always get down on herself because somebody, she may have seen somebody else that had more likes. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Her mind isn't, isn't processed like mine, is able to process things like, like an adult mm -hmm. to say like, that don't mean that shit, that shit is better. That just means they did something to get more followers and more people saw it and Right. You know what I'm saying? But she had started getting down on herself, start going into this little, you know, this little place that we didn't like just being her parents. And it's just fucked up that she had to, you know, like that, like from what I saw, that's what did it. Mm -hmm. And if that happened to my daughter, it, it's happening to Everywhere. kids all over the place yeah. and it adults. Is. It's some adults I, that's like, damn, hating on niggas for no reason. You know what I'm saying? Like all kind of crazy shit. And they, they, they got to deal with that shit because they have to see it. You know, they, they're so addicted to flicking up mm -hmm. even when they hate seeing you post something. You know what I'm saying? Like your podcast did numbers. They hate it, but they got to look at it. Right. And that fuck with them mentally. You know what I'm saying? That's some crazy they shit. They won't that like is. it either. That is. Yeah, they ain't go no, right they past they'll just look at that right shit. Past. No, they'll watch the video. Like, <laughs> they yeah. The niggas are burning rubber right now. Huh? Damn. <laughs> All those <laughs> niggas. Like, I've been doing my podcast for seven years. Like, <laughs> like damn, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it, that's it. That's like some real shit. Yeah. And I think, that's a I fact. think, a, I think between that, you know, people feeling like they have this, uh, this sense of, uh, of like. Somebody gives a fuck what you think. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, Facebook is big on that. Like, bro, don't nobody care that that you feel this way about LeBron James. You know what I'm saying? Like, Facebook's not even, on else. I hate, man. I cannot stand that shit, It's man. funny to look at, but when you really see the emotions in this shit, I'll just be like, dog. Facebook is a whole nother ball game, bro. bro. It's a whole nother ball I game. I get having there. a debate. But once I see like two hundred comments, five hundred comments, right, bro, and, it's like, ain't got and it's the same do. four people talking to each other, I'd be like, dog, yeah. all right, y'all niggas have called each other, had this shit over in five minutes. They don't even know each other, so they can't right, call each true. other. Face, like, Facebook shit. get crazy. Yeah, but we, I mean, we all, we all, we all are a part of that shit. You know, we oh, yeah, all get facts. caught up in it. You know what I'm saying? Like, thank God we're in a, we're in a, a, a good enough. Uh, mind frame that we can see past certain things right but everybody don't got the same mind the same mind that you have you know what i'm saying like everybody don't have it so it's just like it puts a lot of people in a lot of fucked up uh situations that That's they gotta deal with oh, how much time we got we good i got we two. good that? yeah good. um we get off into what's going on like right now this nigga still a man of many hats <laughs> i was just about to say yeah. you want to talk about paris real quick uh, yeah, I, I went to I went to Paris. Um, I, I went so I'm a uh, the Detroit Cavassier influencer. Um, what well, the the, the Cavassier influencer for the city of Detroit, and what that means is um, I get paid to like do cool shit, man. <laughs> so does us drinking that help you? Hell yeah, Cavassier. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Cavassier. So my thing is, so this is the okay. thing. That's all we offer. Cavassier. Bamboo, Bamboo. Bamboo y'all fucked up. Bamboo man. ain't even hit us back, so yeah, fuck. Ahead, so, so Cavassier <laughs> has like, uh, Cavassier has not put like, you know, for the most part, like one dollar into uh, marketing a promotion, and especially in the urban market in like almost twenty years or something like that. So, uh, Hennessy has, you know, and they and they control a, a big portion of the market. Now, another thing I was told. I, I don't know how true this is, but uh, I've heard it from multiple people, is that outside of Cognac, France, right, where they, where they like, or like that area where they make Cognac, mm -hmm. Detroit, Michigan is the number one Cognac 
consuming place on the planet. I can and believe it. You can believe it. it. I can. You can believe it. Like it's not. It, it don't I'm make just, you say like, no, nah, bro. I'm thinking off travel alone though. When I yeah, travel, you don't see vodka, nobody really drinking I fuck cognac with, uh, like that. Tequila, you know, whatever. Yeah. So now, uh, you know, things are things are changing. You know what I'm saying? And and uh, they're doing they're doing that right. And they're doing they're trying to do dope shit, trying to tell people to drink responsibly, and try you know I, and like uh, the whole thing is going back to what you were saying at the beginning about the like kings and queens. Mm-hmm. It's about uh, the, like the 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 push is about. It's called. It's the hashtag is honor your code, and it's like that's whatever and whatever you represent. Mm-hmm. You know, just have some honor and some pride about that shit. Right. You know what Don't I'm saying? And then like, messy and cool. yeah, like stand, just stand, stand on up. it, stand yeah. on that shit, right? So, um, you know, they hit me up, man, and I and I really, I was really vibing with the um their direction, and some of the things that they told me that they're trying to do, and they're trying to uh, like the the activations that they're they're attempting to do in the city of Detroit and the surrounding area. And I'm like, I would love to be a part of it. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, th- and also, I have things going on already that they that they think is pretty cool. You know, like the Secret Garden, the the parties that we do. Yeah, uh, should be hype. Yeah, so we 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 had that going on. We do a lot of things. I'm back. I'm back more into DJing. You know, uh, you know the store. Like everything. I, everything I have going on fits what they are. You know, what they're trying to like how they're trying to push it or whatever. So. It's some crazy, crazy shit about to happen over the next, you know, pretty much like the year is planned out. Like from from now until, uh, you know, like January. I love it. I got to get that. <laughs> you tell me that. Not, that one hard. It's not like an atomic bomb. Uh, uh, but, yeah, so uh, it's some dope It's some crazy uh, installations. They, uh, so Cavassier has a uh, – has a uh, partnership with Def Jam, so they' about to be doing some crazy stuff with Def Jam. It's starting with uh, Amir Obi. You heard of Amir Obi? I think he's from here. I haven't. So Amir Obi is an artist that signed to Def Jam from here. Um, Bobby yeah. Sessions, I believe. That's crazy. Uh, uh, Valley, Valley from Chicago. Mm-hmm. And then it's one other person I always forget. It's a uh, female, but they're doing like we're gonna be doing like you know listening parties or like invite only shows mm-hmm. for like. 75 people at these little dope I spots. That's what I'm shit. trying to get into. The invite only. Yeah, small yeah, I've never heard of this nigga. He, yeah. No, that's what I said. I'll put, crazy I'll put that you, like, we ain't I'll Oh, put, shit. Bro. I'll put you on the hookup. I didn't know. So, this nigga done changed his name like five fucking times. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he done changed his name like five times and Word. he looks kind of different. Yeah, this nigga. Uh, he looks kind of Yeah, because he, he used to come through here. <laughs> bro, yeah, 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 yeah. This nigga. Um, that nigga was cold. He used to go by like Fresh or something with the P H P H R E S H, bro. Uh, like okay. that's what he used to be under. He used to wear his hat cocked to the side. Light skin nigga. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I didn't know he yeah. started going by like just a regular name. So he's still rapping or? Uh, it's, you know, it's a little. It's like you know everybody kind of do like you. They rap they a little bit, sing shit. a little bit, like melody a little bit. Oh, okay. bro, it's you a, know this nigga too. Vibe. Like if you see his picture, like he used to be. He People was, was a cool ass nigga. His new shit was like, um, it's a vibe. <laughs> um, oh, damn, it seemed like this nigga been grinding for a for long a minute. Ass and he, and he, time, he was, bro. From what I remember, he was in New York for for uh, some years. Yep. Then he came back here for a minute, and that's when he. I remember Jay John was. They was working together doing some stuff. He had hit Jay John up. And then I hadn't heard about him for a minute, and then they pre- they showed us this, and he, it was him. I got an old ass song by this what nigga. I'm gonna send it to you. I thought Diddy, <laughs> I'm gonna send that shit I guess to Diddy was just like, "Fuck it, I'm gonna do my own shit." Because I remember that like him and Buster Cavassier gave them some cheese. Like, no, from what I from what I know, my, when they had that past the Cavassier song, yeah. from what I was told, that Buster Rhymes did that. They they did the okay. song. So like. That like well, orig- like they may have given them some money on the back before. end before. No, on the back end, okay. like they just did the song because right. they was drinking Cavassier at the time, I guess. Mm-hmm. So at that time, Cavassier, you know, they wasn't putting money in the marketing and stuff. But you know, after it came out and it, and it got the the, the, the it got the rolling, then of course it's like okay, well let's work together now and keep pushing it. So, but that was however long they pushed it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it wasn't nothing like so they was, did something, but it wasn't. Yeah, I don't, and I don't know. I, mean, I don't know if it was money. I don't know. Popping back know. then either. So yeah, whatever. so I don't, yeah, I don't know exactly what it was, but uh, but that's like the main thing, man. They took us over to France to like show us uh, the 
it was basically like a, a field trip on steroids. And we and we saw like the the complete pr- uh, process of producing cognac from from okay. going That's to the, the great vineyards uh, all the way to this like distilling distillery like this so where they distill it to uh, making the barrels the wood barrels and like the 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 the, the uh, those come from trees that have to they don't get cut down a day before 200 years old and then they yeah. cut they come from one like one forest over there somewhere mm-hmm. they made that and then how they so they, how they make the barrels and then uh and then the, the the barrels being aged from you know vs is like two years vsop is like up to six years and xo is and why that the, like xo is quote unquote better than vs you know what i'm saying it's 10 plus ain't it uh, what XO? XO, XO is uh, I believe it's between six and twelve, which okay. is usually around ten years. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Uh, all the way to like bottling, and they gave us our own little bottle of like with our name on it, and like I think the one we we got came from us something that was like aged for like thirty eight years or forty years or some crazy yeah. shit like that. But it was that's it was dope. Dope. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's that like a dope, dope that's sale, something though. that. A kid in Pontiac will never yeah. witness or see. Yeah, that's and, really I, and dope. I, all I, like and the crazy thing, man, I realized like a couple years ago, <clears throat> I was walking through the club, and this nigga said some go- some like goofy shit to me, bro. Just like the most goofy, trying to say, you know, how niggas be trying to like say like, yo, dog, I fuck with you and what you doing, but he just said it in a goofy way that I looked at him like the fuck is you talking about bro you know what i'm saying like i get what you're saying but all you had to say was like man good shit bro Mm -hmm. and then (laughs) so i started i I can't it was like there's something goofy dog like (laughs) what are those you like saying bro because i get because i I get he said he said something it was it's something to do with like like i'm some doing something more than jesus christ or some shit like that and I'm like, bro, no, I'm not. <laughs> no, bro. I just, I spent a couple verses, dog, over the store, nigga. What is you talking oh, about? Boy. Like, Jesus has saved lives, nigga. I, what are you talking about, bro? It was, I can't remember exactly what it was, but I looked at him like, uh, I'm like, damn. Nigga said, just second so it was, coming all <laughs> year. It was like that. It was like that. They and bought then, the Beyonce, this nigga, bro. He gonna be. I was like, the man, Beyonce Rohab. pictures where she Jesus. In this I was like, all right, dog. <laughs> and then, uh, and then sure. another time, just crazy shit. I was in Pontiac and I saw, I saw this nigga. That, I was at a Dusty had a show in Pontiac. And we was on the same management. Uh, Coin Handler. Handler. Dusty, man, that's yeah. another one, man. Man, he wanted the greatest dog. He wanted the dopest to me between him and Stretch Money. I ain't, I'm not talking about Big Herc. I'm not talking about certain niggas. Fuck, I was supposed to ask you that too, but go ahead. Yeah, but to me, Dusty and Stretch Money on on that side of shit, like to me on the on the hip hop quote unquote hip hop side of shit, mm-hmm. uh, Guilty it, like it's like Guilty Marv one and uh, Royce and M don't count, but Guilty Marv I and uh, I fucked up. No, Guil- I asked that. Asked Guilty that, Marv yeah. and Dilla. It's my favorite MCs on that side of thing, and Stretch and Dusty all time. Like can, nobody on that street shit can compare to them niggas. You've been saying that shit for a long time they about won. that nigga Dusty too. Yeah, that's my nigga. <laughs> yeah. uh, Dusty spark that. F- all that shit, bro. He yeah, had it. You bro. talking about the nigga that brought his he own? He brought the shit, bro. Like language, lingo, all that shit, bro. And all that shit was super sweet. Yeah, that nigga was cold that when he had the love. Pinyana shit, boy. The shit before that, though. Like his shit uh, even yeah. before the that airplane, was fire. Uh, yeah. Was it plane? Something about a ticket? Some shit. It was something about that. But That's I was when that nigga had the little Dusty McFly with the McDonald's. I had. I was in uh, <laughs> logo of that bitch. I was in Pontiac. Like he had a show at this. This you know it was downtown Pontiac, but it was some hood shit, of course. And uh, them niggas was in there, and I was like, man, I'm about to dip. I told them niggas, you know, they was like, you straight? I'm like, bro, I'm in, I'm in the yak. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I, I, I walk outside, and I'm walking in my car, and I see this nigga I, I went to, I went to uh, junior high school with, and the nigga was like, damn, bro, you out here? Or something like that. You out here by yourself? I'm like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, the club is there, my car is there. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? And he was like, man, you got to watch yourself, dog. You can't be out here in these streets like that. I'm like, nigga, I'm downtown Pontiac, bro, and my car is 47 steps away from me. Like, 
And he was like, nah, bro, niggas look at you like something. And I was like, you know, like, okay. And I, but I, I told the nigga, I said, bro, if I can't walk, if I can't walk down the street in my own city, what am I walking for? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That nigga was like, all right, bro, get to the crib. <laughs> but it's, it's like that for some niggas, yeah. though. You know, but you I, hear about niggas getting killed on their block. Yeah. All type of, but you know I was, what I'm saying? You know, you know, I think it's, I think a lot of that is an energy thing. Not mm -hmm. a, not all the time. It's some goofy mm -hmm. shit going on. Yeah. But you know, and I, I was like, man, once he, when when those two things happen is once is it is when I started kind of realizing how people view me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because my thing is the way I the way I I'm on the I'm on the inside looking out. You know what I'm saying? So I, I you're just I, living your life. Shit. Yeah, and I and I see where like. You know, I, I don't, I'm not a, I don't have millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. I don't have, you know, it's things that I, I want and can't get. It's things that I have to sacrifice to, to be able to do this. You know what I'm saying? But some people looking like, yo, this nigga is doing all this. This nigga's in Paris. And it's like, yeah, but I didn't pay $1. You know what I'm saying? But like the thing, too, I feel like people, re you work to get where you at. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you yeah, know what I'm fact. saying? Like, like hand we just you. talked about. The struggles of growing up, the DJing, the throwing the parties. You didn't have, you that said, three I, had to, was that. I had to find a way to get half to come up with the store. Like, this is yeah. shit that you're saying that you had to make it work. Like, yeah, that's real. And, like, and you know, and when I, when I kind of got to that point, I realized that, like, I, I'm, I'm like, a, I'm, a, I'm like a, a, a view of, of inspiration for niggas. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, you have to, you, you, it's undeniable where it's like I wasn't kind of picked up from here and placed here. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like it's a you can see the whole like niggas went to my parties that I did at the beginning where it was four niggas there. And we still my niggas still went crazy, though. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? That's to now to now when I throw something, it's five, it's, you know, it's a 500 capacity club and that bitch at capacity at 1145. And we still going crazy doing the same shit. You know what I'm saying? So it's like it's no difference of who I am, it's just a process of getting to where I knew I would get to and I knew that most niggas would quit on that path. Real quick. I seen a post. I don't be believing shit that you play your daughter's song at one of your parties. At everyone. Everyone. So yeah, right now. You come That's I'm fine. DJing at the Deluxe Flux on the fifteenth. I'm playing her song. It started off it's funny because it started <laughs> off like but the thing is this, bro. She got bars. She got bars. She got personality, and it's produced by KT. How old is she? Yeah, she's so eight right, now. Right. She'll be nine in uh, in August. Okay. But she um, she she just one day, she's like like my oldest daughter looks more like me. You know what I'm saying? But she's more la like way more laid back and bro. more like conservative than me. Sid has had character for as far bro, as my as youngest as far daughter is like, yo, I can remember. Yeah, she, <laughs> she's like, <laughs> no, she like crazy. I'm about, I want to rap. <laughs> when you teaching me how to DJ, nigga, like, uh, and that's and she up, say man. it like that. Nigga, it'd be a two hour podcast on stories, Bro, stories so on funny, Sid, man. dude. She's crazy, dog. So <laughs> she, one day she was like, uh, I want to rap. So I was like, I taught her, I taught her how to rap. You know what I'm saying? I told her, find a word that you want to rhyme. You know, write as many words you could think that rhyme with it. Get uh, hit, listen to the beat, get a cadence, mm -hmm. and then start putting it together like a puzzle. And then she, you know, she's Sid, the kid, and I'm like, and then she gets stuck. And then uh, she was like, the first line, she was like, uh, Sid, she, like, I'm Sid, the kid, and then she got stuck. And then she was like, uh, I was like, what are you doing? And she was like, writing or something like that. I'm like, okay, are you good at it? She's like, I'm dope. I was like, well, say that. She was like, I'm dope when I'm right, team. Mm -hmm. And then it just, that's how, so that's how the that's whole how process. And now she just kind of like, she'll come to me like, I got two bars, dad. And then she'll spit them like, damn, that shit is dope. And then so when we went out to LA, my man KT did the beat. And I'm like, we go out to LA. I'm like, man, she want she gonna record the song out here. She was in the studio. That's it was cool. so crazy, dog. Shit. This how, And it, it's so crazy because she got, she got like a, a leader, like a leader personality and a, uh, and like she knows, what, like which is scary because I didn't, I didn't know what I wanted until I was like out mm -hmm. of college. But she know she. We, so we go to the studio and and like all I got a lot of friends out in LA. So they all excited about like she's going to the studio to record, right? So she go in the studio. Shit, I just got excited when you were saying she in Cali. And you shit. know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm here. So she go in the studio and she started talking to KT about 
about making a beat. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So she in there like, we, so we all like, you you know, you ready to record? They go to Mike and she like, no, nah, give me a second. Uh, so when you push this, <laughs> when you push this this pad, and he, so he was like, you put a sound on it and you and then it, you know, like you put a drum and it's like, doom, doom, doom. And then he was like, well, this one could be another sound. So she was like, doom, doom, cat, doom, cat, doom. Like, and was making it, like, about to make a beat, right? So we sitting there, like, about 15 minutes go by. Now we kind of like, yo, when are you going to record this shit, right? <laughs> and then she did. She got on the, on the piano. She was like, oh, this is cool. And she started playing the piano, you know, pushing, pushing keys. And then she was like, all right, I'm ready to record. And did that shit in one take. One take. Bang, one take. bang, yeah. bang, bang. She was seven or eight. She was, she was seven then. She was seven. Yep, she was seven, and just she knocked that bitch out. And y'all in there talking to her crazy, talking about, you ready yet? Come on. Yeah, like, she was like, nah. And then she was like, all right, I'm ready. Put the headphones on. It was like, the beat played. And you could hear the song. I'm going to put, I was trying to, I'm doing a video for it. So I'm, I'm trying to get my man's, uh, my video guys is in Chicago. And he, he got the whole everything mapped out for the everything. And I'm like, but just, he just ain't been to the crib in I don't know how long. So when he come home, we're supposed to shoot the video. And then. KT wants to put it on our next album, on the next Rose Gold album. Okay. As like, a, and I might, like, they want me to put a verse on it, but I might just talk on some like, some Diddy shit, like, you know, take that, you know, yeah, just yeah. say some shit, <laughs> yeah, so, just. like, it's shit, you know, just something. I don't even know what I'm gonna say, but I might do that. But it's gonna be like a song, not even like a bonus. It's gonna be like oh, number song. number seven yeah. on the album. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. That shit fire. So that's fire as fuck. Yeah. What's What's next for Burn Rubber? Uh, we about to move. We about to move down the street to uh, it's like a quarter mile down the street. It's a doper location. It's bigger, cheaper. Uh, Y'all still got the Tampa, Tampa joint. Nah, no, Tampa shut down. Like for, when we did it, it was some things we didn't know about how to how to play that game, that 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 uh, political game of like. Wow, okay. You okay. know, so we had like every every account except for Nike, Jordan, and Adidas. They, okay. would, they wouldn't open that store, but it was another store that just popped up. But they didn't, they, like, we had been telling them for some time, this is what we're going to do. They didn't tell us that another store, had, they had approved them to open up. Oh, okay. So they wouldn't okay. open us up. So we ended up shutting it down or whatever. Um, but the, the new store is bigger, is more set up to be able to do doper, uh, like, installations for, a sp like, a specific clothing line if they want to do something crazy or even in stores. And it's just, it's just a, a doper feel as far as like more up to date boutique uh level, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's uh that's like August and um basically taking shit to it to the next level, man. Just you know, trying fighting to get the best product, the coolest product that we could possibly get, you know what I'm saying? And keep elevating, man, and just taking that shit to the next level. Uh what you think you have a podcast, correct? I don't not have a hell no. Oh, I thought you had. Who you said? No, no. Oh, you said they do podcast. Yeah, yeah. No, at, at yeah. Rick Rick spot. You said Rick spot. No, somebody recorded here. Somebody. No, did. niggas have come. Yeah, uh, niggas have come record. No, oh, so, so, niggas, so niggas have come record their podcast. Picks with Clay or some shit oh, okay. was here. And uh, yeah. but my my That's cousin, who's the exactly. assistant yeah. manager here at the store, he has a dope podcast that they do, and they've recorded it here a couple times because they have like a, a sneaker segment. So when shoes mm. come out, mm. instead of taking them all the shoes out, they just do it here and. You know, do the shit on video right. here, but no, okay. I don't. I, I mean, I got, I got, I, I don't have enough time to do anything, man. Oh, that's like, a lot of work. You know, <laughs> no, I that's my bad. I thought this that shit. Was yeah, it. yeah, you said a lot of fucking that's a lot work, of stuff right? I was, I was, yeah, and, and then I like another thing. I don't ever want to like, like, you know, somebody you could be like, you know, you you, you are what you you know. Thoughts become things, and you are what you say you are, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I kind of live by that motto, but you. To say like I'm a DJ, but I but it's it's niggas that really DJ, you know what I'm saying? Like you gotta be at, you gotta do it at a certain level. Yeah, you get what I'm saying? Niggas got two mics, niggas got doing sound and shit. Yeah. Niggas got four cameras and cameras moving and shit. Cause we, <laughs> we, we, I, we there. You know what I'm saying? Like some real shit. But then but it, but then it's a nigga. It'd be some nigga 
that turn his iPhone around and be like, I got a podcast. And it's like, yeah. I mean, I guess, I been guess a lot of, been a lot of that going on. Bro, yeah. Don't get <laughs> no, but I'm, I'm saying a lot of that shit. I mean, and not taking, and not trying to take away from what you think you're doing, bro. But it's yeah. like, nah, niggas got podcasts, bro. Like niggas really doing that shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Niggas mm-hmm. going different places and giving you, like, giving you people that niggas actually give a fuck about. Right. You know what I'm saying? First of all, like, yeah, you interview your old little cousin because he. Oh, yeah. hoop, you know niggas, niggas like, be in the DM like, bro, sorry, not, yeah. not, like, not, not tough, right now. Though, <laughs> like, tell them niggas they come over here and intern. Right <laughs> <laughs> tell them they Fast, come that's over what here. we need. Yeah, shit. for real. And I'm a, all that's right. So fact. this is something I'm battling with because I, I get it. Like I'm real big, and I can say since I started doing events, and like I like working with upcoming people. Yeah. But like he said, you have to be the right upcoming person. Mm-hmm. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Like, how do you do you work with a lot of upcoming and yeah, for sure. With some pros I mean, we made and cons. a career, we made a career off of that. So the thing the thing about up and coming is is still like there's certain people that and this is in everything everything that you're doing that you're putting yourself out there, right? Mm-hmm. It's certain people that just got it, right? It's certain people that do a t-shirt. And it's just the dopest T-shirt that niggas have ever seen, and it sells ten thousand units, right? Mm-hmm. And there's some niggas that think they dope, or are really may may be dope, right? And just don't really have it, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But it's at least from from like my my standpoint, I see certain things in certain people, and even if I I have the ability to to like see that. Going back to what Slap said. To, to to when this nigga called me and spit his first verse, I was like, eh. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But it's like, but damn, dog, this nigga voice is, cr- like, it don't matter what he say. It shit sounds sweet, mm-hmm. right? Like, it sounds sweet. So it don't even matter what he say. So if, that's the, that's the, that's the part that n- niggas don't have. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of niggas that can rap their ass off, but they sound stupid. Mm-hmm. So, that that, in, that intangible is something that you cannot develop. You know what I'm saying? You can't develop a dope voice. You just got a dope voice. What you can develop is skill, though. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You pr- you get around niggas that rap better than you, and you you and that's gonna push you to rap better. In a year, you are gonna sound better than you did the year yeah, before. Yeah, you gonna sound different. You gonna start period. to harness that shit. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And if you got niggas that's that's like some 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 legitimate OGs, that's gonna say like. No, it's not sweet, bro. God, it ain't enough. I don't think it it's, it's enough, enough OGs. It's no just more, not man. sweet. You it's know what I'm saying? Like, like, and I and I'm not even saying like him coming out of the booth. He could have been like, yeah, fuck you, bro. And because I'm not saying that I'm like I'm not I'm not Jay Z. I don't know why I didn't. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but <laughs> but like, at the same time, but at, at the same time, it was a, it was a respect. Like yeah. I, I didn't I didn't disrespect you by saying it was you know right. I just said like, I mean, yeah, you could put it out, but. If I was to hear this shit, I wouldn't listen to it again. I would be like, oh, duh, I'd rather turn on some other shit. Right. right? Until it gets to the point, like, and, and and then when it got to the point where I felt that the shit was dope, at that point, it's like, yeah, dog, to me, if you're asking me, you got it. You know what I'm saying? If you never asked me, I might have never said nothing. But it's like, damn, you got it. That's that's it. When you start doing that, and I do that shit and do it better, like, continue to do get better at right. it. Mm-hmm. And at that point... You know, you want you want to pop it. This nigga would move around, hopping on songs too. You could like never get a feature out this nigga. For me, like he would move around. Like when we when the shit was trash. Right? No, when shit was trash, he, oh. he was he was, <laughs> he was like, yeah, man. Like he do this little thing. Like, oh, man, not yet. Like, yeah, like, hey, hey, hey. but, it, but it's the same thing. It's the same <laughs> thing with a, with a cameraman. It's the same thing with a sound. Bro. It's the same thing with a sound oh, yeah. engineer. It's the same thing with everything, bro. And it's like you have to. It's certain things you have to. You have to be able to see in people that they have the drive because you could be you could, he could have had a dope voice, but if it's like he don't ever come to the studio or he don't ever be around niggas that rap, mm-hmm. that's that's pushing him to be better. Then he ain't gonna ever really be nothing. You know what I'm saying? But if you got the drive to want to drive from Michigan State down to Pontiac to sp- to spend money and getting in the studio to put mm-hmm. it on your craft, like and that's something that we gonna talk a little inside baseball shit, but that's something I feel like our team going through right now. We got to get everybody on the same page and want everybody to have that same drive. Yeah, had, right, you right. know, 
It's been a year. That's so tough. Time for niggas. What's going on a year? I feel like time you for know, niggas to get in their bag. Yeah, it's time. <laughs> yeah, it's tough, man. But th- but the thing is, another thing I've noticed, even with uh, like I have some like my like my personal friends, like some of my best friends I grew up with, and whatever that you know, these niggas don't rap, these niggas don't throw parties and shit like that. But we've been talking about doing things for like literally yeah. twenty years. Yeah. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Like me. literally. And the thing is, it's better for you to figure this out now. Like the earlier, the better. Mm-hmm. Is that Something that you might want for a nigga, he might not want for himself. Yeah, and that's yeah. not a that's not a bad thing. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Like I used to tell my like so it's like it's like which is rare, but I have like eight or nine best friends. You know what I'm saying? Most niggas got like one or two niggas that oh, they that sound about right. No, that's all about right that's with us. Right, but I mean yeah. it's the same group of niggas. You right, feel me? Yeah. Right. Which I mean, but that's still yeah. rare. Like right. most most yeah. of the time you talk to people, they like, no, nah, I fuck with dude and dude, but not yeah, he, I mean, he cool. Yeah, he cool, I, you know, but mm-hmm. as far as, like, I wouldn't let my kids go around that guy, but my right. kids could spend the night over at his house. You know what I'm saying? Just mm-hmm. whatever. Um, and I have, like, I have, like, eight or nine of them, and between us, we know literally everybody in Pontiac. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I DJ, and I host that bitch. We could have been throwing parties for, you know, but some niggas just don't want to throw parties. That's not what they're trying to do. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, even if they – join an organization and throw a party they that they did they might have did that because of the organization was blah 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 and they kind of felt like that's what they had to do but that's not particularly what they they want to do outside you know and then for so you know for so long i used to be like man these niggas be bullshit my niggas be bullshit and then just realized like you know they just don't it's not it's nothing wrong with you know i used to be like well you know if, if if bro spit is this you know then Nigga, you good at math? You could be the you could be the the whatever oh, manager. Yeah. Nigga, you good at this? Talking to people, you could be the booking agent. You could do it. like we can create this, and and some niggas not trying to sacrifice for a year. Some niggas not trying to sit back and be like, man, I ain't got paid this year from that. You know what I'm saying? Not seeing the future and saying like, well, nigga, you know, we like Mav Carter now. We like. You know, all these people that we're and I put myself in position to do something else. That's the main struggle for all entrepreneurs, period. Um, we look at different cultures and see them getting paid and mm-hmm. their families is tied in. They can that help. Instagram bullshit. That too. They see shit and think shit might be sweet, but it ain't. Yeah. Go, bro, on some real shit, niggas say, this is Instagram as hell, but that Paris trip, it was fun, right? It was it was fun. I'm not taking nothing away from that. No, but, it's work. but that shit was work, yeah, my nigga. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Like we was go like we would be out from seven mm-hmm. to like eleven. Seven AM to eleven PM. Work. Like shit. Doing shit. Business, yeah. 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 And business. then, you know, I'm not I might Instagram a little bit of that shit, but when we go to the club and and they pop eight, nine bottles. I'm going crazy, bro. Having a time of his life, and it's like, nigga, I'm barely making it. I'm 40, my nigga. (laughs) I'm barely making it. Like, like I I push sin, and I'm yawning. You know what I'm saying? But but it look, it It looks fun. It looks fun. And don't don't get me wrong. Like I would rather be doing that than going to a cubicle every day. Right. But that shit is work, and a lot of niggas ain't built for that shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's just it's just a thing. That's just not. So I'm gonna take it there because um. We we do we've been taking like we take this podcast shit like really serious now. You know what I'm saying? I feel like we we getting better every month. And I um kick it to one of my um one of the people on our team. I'm like, look, you saying that you can't do this and we can't do that. Picture when we get to traveling and shit. Oh man, like it's it, it started off as fun, but it's gonna be to a point in time where it's like I don't really feel like fuck. It's days where I don't feel like record. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Oh, that's just like real that. shit. Audio, like, video, and niggas be like, "Yo, this nigga tough. slaps does like, damn yo. near seventy percent of this shit right here." Yeah, yeah. it's gonna be real. feeling like it. It's just like, yeah, "Yo, just like think of what this shit could be." Setting up, yeah. That's why. That's what this shit could be, bro. DJing. I stopped DJing because back I I was the DJ DJ, like carrying records and crates. Oh yeah, and all these niggas come in with a backpack and they rap for twenty minutes. And then by the time I'm done packing my shit back in the car, them niggas back in the, at the in the Pontiac. I mean, right. we ain't coming from Ann Arbor, 
I get home at five o'clock. I'm like, bro, I ain't trying to do this shit no more. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? But niggas don't see that side of things. Yeah, that shit. That breakdown setup. Yeah, <laughs> all that no shit. The joke, editing, bro. like video editing. uploading. Like, what? That shit. Yeah, that's something special, bro. That's something that special. That shit, man. And that's something a nigga never be able to take from you either. That shit right, crazy. Real quick, I think we go wrap up in a little bit. Yeah, nigga, uh, Detroit, Detroit, the crib. Detroit culture. Mm-hmm. The greatest um, culture of all time. I agree, man. Mm-hmm. Cartiers. Yes. Yes, indeed. Um, <laughs> all right, I had a guy. I didn't mind you. I didn't have every pair of yays, nigga. Yeah. Damn. It's a lot of people. What's your doughboy? There's a lot of people snatching shit. What's your doughboy uh, name? I got um, Miles Caffey. Doughboy Miles. Doughboy Miles. The wires, the woods. So, uh, doughboy Miles over here. Go. My first pair of buffs was later. Of course, you get buffs the older you get. Of course. It's different now because it's a lot of fake ones out here. And, of course. You know, kids are well off now. Parents are doing better now. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was downtown. And I remember I was like, all right, I had a, I'm gonna get, I got my I aviators. Had every buff. I mean, every. No, day. I haven't had every, but I didn't. No, have I'm wires, like niggas that had wires, and woods. Oh, okay, already, yeah, already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Niggas weren't going crazy like, like that. Damn, no, I didn't had a Ooh. pair of wires. I had a pair of woods, and I had a pair of buffs. Okay, so I got my wire aviators. Okay, this recently and shit. This probably like two years ago. Somebody was like, bro, why you got them? You need some buffs. I love them bitches, bro. Mm. <laughs> them wire aviators wire. are so hard, yeah. dog. My thing is, first of all, why are you in my fucking business? I like what I like. Yeah. Um, and it's just like, I'd have had them before. You know what I'm saying? Why do you feel like people are so focused on, like, again, because buffs just now got It's the popular. trophy. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But do you think it's something wrong with wires? Is it something wrong with woods? Like, people are downplaying these different... No. Well, like, I'm gonna tell you like this. I'm gonna tell you like this. There's times. <laughs> I just want a pair. <laughs> I just want a pair. It's hilarious. Uh, there, there's like a, like everything. Everything kind of goes in a circle, right? Definitely. Some some things are at the top of the circle or whatever point of the circle for longer than other mm-hmm. others, right? So, like a couple years ago, right? Like in Jay John, as we all know, is like. You know, this is that's what he do. He's from Puritan. He said it in front of anybody. I'm from Puritan. The, the reason I, he did something crazy or some just did some J. John shit, and the nigga before they even get the chance to say why did you do that, his response is I'm from Puritan. Mm-hmm. That's the answer. That's why I did it, right? So a couple years ago, you come around here with some wires. He like, man, niggas got why is niggas wearing wires, bro? Yeah. That shit's so played. Like that's you know what I'm crazy, saying. Bro. But then now. Wires is coming back. Yeah. Wires is coming back around. You know what I'm saying? Maybe because they're not as expensive, especially on the resale market. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Buffs are, I think buffs are just a trophy thing, bro. I think buffs is just like, it's like a Rolex. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, for, for, with me, you know, people are all, be trying to get into all these different watches, Breitling's and all this shit. The reason I, I, I will always have a Rolex or always sought to, to have a Rolex is because Jay-Z and Nas. Mm-hmm. I saw Nas and that nigga had the, that nigga had the all gold Prezi with the black face. And then Jay had the all, just the all gold Prezi with the gold face. And it's like, at that time. Presidential. Yeah. It's like, I, could, like, I need that. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I have, to have, I have to have that watch. Whether, I, whether it's when I turn, you know, 21 or I turn 50. Like when, I, but when I get that watch, to me, it's a, it's a, it's like a success. It's like a trophy, mm-hmm. and I think buffs, especially the, the whites, you know, because of because the hit, the history of niggas getting murdered over them, yeah. the history of niggas getting, you know, getting the shit snatched and all type of crazy shit. You know, um, I don't think Woods would ever really. I don't think that Woods did Woods ever really go out of style. No, that's my. P- I'd have had somebody nah, say, "Why I, you got I wood?" Still, like I that's still, what I'm saying. Right. Yeah, I, I mean, so, I just bought a pair. I of think woods. it's more of the right. younger culture that's just pushing the buff head. So classy to me, but, man. Yeah, I love all Kurt. You know what I'm saying? And again, I came in. I had older cousins, older friends that I hung around. I, you know, so I was younger, like middle school. And again, I uh, was fortunate to sell pit bulls when it was hot. Like real pit bulls? I thought you were talking about like a candy or something. No, I'm talking about dogs. Like I had a kennel and everything. Like, it, like, in yeah. junior high school? Yeah, so. Damn, nigga. Yeah, Y'all need to be interviewing right. this nigga. <laughs> Damn, okay. But go. that was the bag. You know what I'm saying? That was a for sure bag. Um, 
So I had, I remember I was probably, but again, I was fucked up in sixth grade. Mm. Fuck, like that was probably the worst time of my life. Sixth grade. Sixth grade was terrible, but I got into it like seventh grade over going to eighth. So I had fun, got wires. Yeah. Al was and shit. So it's just like I love the Cardi's period. So to, play, to hear people downplay wires, woods, that shit is just crazy to me. And I'm like, I think everything comes in waves, man. You know, some it's people, wave shit some crazy. people, uh, you know, for a minute, Air Force Ones was weak. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But now Air Force Ones is, you know, pretty much coming They're back coming around. coming back, yeah. You know, it's just a, I think it's just a thing, man. Kid, you know, one thing I, I always say is uh, culture is in the youth. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I was just talking to somebody about this, and it's like, one at one point in time, I was the, I was a, you know, and you could still be a culture creator, quote unquote, but at one time, I was, I was the culture, right? Mm-hmm. I was the reason that whatever, not saying that I started niggas wearing no, hoodies real, or no. these kind of hoodies, but because, like, I was wearing these kind of hoodies and a lot of niggas like me and this is what was fresh at the time mm-hmm. and not, and and then a lot of niggas get stuck in like now you're 45 wearing that same hoodie that niggas was wearing you 20 years ago humble, bro that's it you don't <laughs> gotta be humble <laughs> yeah <laughs> but but now nowadays you know it's the, the these kids that are in high school and going into in the college they, they like they're the culture creators mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying so regardless of what i think about they said in the tone whatever the rapper is supposed to be hot i could hate them that's the cool shit right now right. you know so you know that's a dog that could shirt. be that could be uh youth is the culture yeah fire you got that the, uh, <laughs> but you know at, so at one point like now because kids is getting a lot more money parents is getting a lot more money and putting a lot more into doing all this shit for prom and all this shit, you know, Man. maybe, maybe <laughs> those buffs and those that like, Jeez. that's what's hot. You know what I'm saying? Or, or then it, fucking cars be going so crazy. Going crazy. But yeah, I think, it, but it's always, you know, a lot of things are classic, man. And it's always gone. Like I said, now all niggas, I ain't gonna say all niggas talk about, but niggas is talking about wires again. Yeah. And I you see to, niggas, I, I think Royce has got a pair of crazy wires. I just saw. I don't care. I said that wire shit. I brought that shit back. Yeah, stand Back. on that, bro. <laughs> I'm claiming that shit. Niggas was not fucking with wires when I caught some bitches. Yeah, y'all, y'all ever been to Cartier Christmas up here? Nope. No. Y'all ever been to that shit? Mm-hmm. Shit is insane, bro. That shit we do. So every, uh, y'all know, you know, Chris Smokes. Yeah. So Chris Smokes is uh, you know, Khaled right hand man, blah blah blah, whatever. So he's all he's gone a lot, you know, because he's always like with Khaled. So around Christmas time. A couple years ago, he was hit. Him and Jay John was talking, and he was like, "Man, so, like so many niggas is hitting me up to say, you know, just to kick it, cause I, I'm never home." And he was like, "I don't really have a place. Like, I can't kick it with everybody." So right. he was like, "I had this, they had they came up with this idea, cause he sells Cardis and shit to all them niggas, the Migos and all that shit. Him and uh, Spencer. And uh, he was like, "Man, we want to do this thing and call that shit Cartier Christmas, and had that shit at Burn Rubber and all the all the niggas who sell." like real uh like you know authentic. authentic cardies that like vintage and all that shit these niggas set up mm. and it's just a big ass swag fest in here like we close down early take all our shit off the shelf let niggas fight, they bro. come through with cause toys and like thousand percent cause and bait this and louis vuitton that and shit be crazy but they selling cardies in here niggas trading cardies it's like a like mm-hmm. a like a cardi swap shit sound, I- yeah, I, I but we do it every year. Is that like a personal thing or it's open? No, we post it. We post it. Oh, we post shit. it on Instagram and all that. But it's, it's right around Christmas. And this year it's going to be even crazier because we're going to be at the new, new store. At the new spot. Yeah, it's going to be insane. But them niggas come through with like. Come through this bit. Yeah. I'm but I mean, even if you, are, you know. A but it's, it's it's even like like niggas come through, you know, like you you just bought some yays. You come through and you just stunt. You know, niggas mm-hmm. taking crazy pictures and all type of shit. We like, be there. Everybody ain't buying them. You know what I'm saying? But, just, yeah. but it's, it'd be some good deals. You know, that was the first uh, one of the niggas had, uh, I think Kamal had a, a pair of red. I need the, the, the red, red The red woods. Yeah. The, like a year, a couple years ago. I had never seen them. Like, them joints is crazy. That, that's what I'm looking towards right now. I got, I got to. Yeah, it's a big, it's a big swag fest, man. And, and then, and then, uh, you know, smokes come through with the ice. You know, completely iced out, the like bust frame. down. Oh my god! 
Yeah. Shout so. out to that. That's a fun event. I'll probably be sitting looking mad at everybody. <laughs> so I'm like, just moving, shaking that bitch. Yeah. Might get a free <laughs> pair. Yeah, no, hey, yeah, hey he, welcome he, to the forecast podcast. What bad, kind of I get a free pair here, man. That nigga here, gave man. away. Get they did a raffle. They did a raffle. You buy. You buy. Uh, they did a champion. A champion hoodie and a champion T-shirt. But out off the sea, they put Cartier. Mm. And you buy it was like That's a twenty dollar T or forty dollar hoodie. They put in a raffle and put in a raffle for a pair of the uh, 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 buffs with the diamonds with mm-hmm. the with the pointers in that bitch. And I think it was a pair of the red ones. The gave them bitches away. You know what I'm saying? I will be there. Yeah, I'm she setting. Was crazy. The, I'm, I'm setting the mic up to one camera. Oh, facts. We can do that. Yeah, <laughs> like for sure. So go. Let's uh, drop the beat, bro. So I say, you drove. Yeah, nigga. I'm trying to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> yeah, you, you clapping, bitch. I gotta make I it to Clayton Town. Ah. Yeah, let's let's go. So I, I yeah, so we don't go to jail. Let's go. Yeah, right. And this is I'm gonna tell you a secret about this song, bro. This is my fa- this is my Frank the Butcher, favorite the Butcher. one or two songs that I've ever done in my life. This two, two of my favorite verses I ever. Uh, I fucked with this shit. Yeah. yeah. Mr. Popular, go get your binoculars. We here cause we said fuck, fuck the, the world. world. It's the pocket nuts. I could just be anywhere. I'm anonymous. Call me lozenges. I'm in your baby mama's side. I can't rap like this no more. Oh my god, it's a fucking bar. When the last time you heard this? Years. Like return fire. You're a dark. Liar. Say my name around the bird and watch and her light up. Oh shit, bro, spit. Got the people talking. Come to where I'm from without a gun. You might need a coffin. You get a feeling when you're chilling in the lead. It's awesome. Since we the best, we connect from the deep. Yeah, yeah. Another classic. And the video was crazy. The video was hard. You was in the video, right? Yeah, the video was hard as fuck. That's why you played this song. Gerard. 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 Yeah, that nigga, hey. Yeah. Fire. This was like, this was kind of like a collab verse. When it? it was yeah. was yeah Frank the Butcher, my man. yeah 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 that's it. Fire. So yeah, Urban Kings and Queens episode two. Another classic. Roast spit. We here at Burn Rubber. Go ahead, you can sign out. Yeah. Hold on, wait, real quick. JC, ill will. Which one? I know, I know them. Who you take? Between them. I know them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's where we at with it. Yeah. You know them? Right, cool. No, I'm going to tell you the truth, though. I'm going to tell you the truth. Uh, I think they're two, I think they're two uh, amazing talents. I think they two, I think they both do different things. Uh, amazing. For my taste. And I think they might even both say, or I, or I know, I know Ill Will will say, I think JC is a, mentally on another level than, than any of them niggas. That's the Any of them niggas. But performance wise, uh, you know, uh, like that, that grime appeal and that like, like I, like I will really, like the thing is, Ill Will, you really think he'll fuck you up. You know what I'm saying? Like, the sh- like you really and think like, he could potentially do all the shit he's talking about. And he had, I mean, I am trying to incriminate nobody, but he has a pass. You get what I'm saying? He has a pass. Like, he's known for doing certain, you know, for, you know, whatever. But I think they do two totally different things, incredible. But, you know, JC is, 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 yeah, light years beyond, like, a lot of people. Always has seen him at Summer Madness go crazy. Yeah, he go crazy regardless. He go crazy every time. All right, man. We signing out. Shout out to Avi. Shout out to Justin Evolution and my Pontiac dogs. Go yeah. ahead and sign out. Uh, man. Uh, peace. <laughs> Brian Rubber, <laughs> Secret Guard, Cavassier, USA. Honor your coach. Peace to my family, my people. That's really it. Yeah. Hey, Mad Miles, also known as Fresh Ass Deuce. Also. Buff Bagwell, bitch. I'm coming to get my red buff soon. Uh-huh. Listen. I'm not going to be here. <laughs> <laughs> we drinking cognac from now on, y'all. Yeah. We out. What's up, buddy? We drinking cognac. Cavassier. <laughs> <laughs>